This episode is brought to you by Mike Scott Voice. If you're an author or publisher interested in having your written works produced as audiobooks, give narrator Mike Scott a shout at MikeScottVoice.com. Audiobook narrator Mike Scott, the voice of history. You're listening to Addressing Gettysburg. God, that's loud. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Addressing Gettysburg. Uh, I'm Matt, and this is uh, another Ask a Gettysburg Guide. Um, today, our guest is Chris Army. We're talking about Captain Johnston's wild ride, his recon. Right, Eric? You said it, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a couple of things we need to take care of first before we go in there. I uh, just want to thank Ty DeWitt, Kevin Baginski, and Colin Sorveld. I think I said that right uh, for rage, raising their pledge amount on Patreon last week. Um, we appreciate that very, very much. Uh, and, and that's about it, really. Oh, well, the Tom Berenger interview came out uh, yesterday. Did it? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's uh, going well. People are really liking it. It's a three hour long interview, but people really, <laughs> really like it. And uh, so that's good. You haven't had a chance to listen to it yet, have you? I haven't. No. Did he do the counter march step by step? Uh, no, he didn't. He didn't mention the counter march at all. At but all, we no. did talk about platoon. Okay. All right. <laughs> Talked about platoon and uh, the big chill and major league and of course. What Gettysburg. was his favorite movie that he ever made? Um, platoon is up there. Yeah. Because uh, because when we would have phone calls before the interview. Uh, platoon always he would always go back to platoon so i finally said to him was like it sounds like that's one of your favorites because you always go back to platoon Mm -hmm. so uh yeah i think that would be that would be his favorite one there was gettysburg in the top five at least oh yeah no definitely yeah um beard right because he was (laughs) we we (laughs) talked about the beard we did talk about the beard okay now i'm really looking forward to hearing (laughs) turns out it was made from badger fur Ah. A good badger beard. Who, who, <laughs> right. You know. Right. The the quality badger beard. That's right. No, he uh he uh yeah, he 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 did like doing Longstreet. Longstreet and Teddy Roosevelt um were two of his favorites. Yeah. And uh and he had a good time, you know, good experience making the movie Gettysburg. They had a lot of fun here. Had some good memories of the Farnsworth house and Loring Schultz and stuff. So good. it was cool to listen to. Yeah. Um yeah. and also I guess be a part of. But <laughs> It was kind of weird <laughs> to like, because Bo Brinkman was here too. Okay. So they, the two of them would talk and everything. And, and uh, if, there were a few times where I forgot that I was actually part of the show yeah, because they, they let you get in a question. Yeah, they let me, right. They let me speak once in a while. The two of them just went, <laughs> they just went right off and it was, it was a lot of fun though. It was Good. cool. So people seem to be liking it and uh, got a couple of more uh, actors in the pipeline too. Excellent. So, working our way to Martin Sheen and Sam Elliott. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Okay, don't forget to like, uh, follow, subscribe, all that stuff. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Make sure you have the notifications turned on. Also, if you use the Apple Podcast app, please leave a five-star review. Reviews, liking, sharing, and subscribing are the best ways to help us grow our audience. Okay. Like I said, we're talking about uh, Captain Johnston's recon. Um, Chris Army is here to talk about it with us. Uh, Chris, it's a uh, rather controversial aspect of the battle. Would that uh, be a fair assessment? It can be. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, like a lot of things in Gettysburg, you can turn something controversial yeah. uh, by reading a second account. You know, if you read one account, usually you know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you read a second account or something else about it, yeah, it can become controversial. There's got to be something else in there that, uh, that somebody will hone in on and then yeah. sometimes blow it out of proportion, perhaps. Sure. Yeah. All right. Well, so it's not a well-known part of the battle. So for the sake of the newbies out there, let's give them a little bit of a background as to what it even is. Who Who is Captain Johnston? Why is he going on this reconnaissance? Yeah. Who told him to? What What side is he even on? Like, yeah. so go ahead. Give why us. Why do we even care about? Why do we care? Samuel yeah. R. Johnson, yeah. Right? What's the BFD? Yeah, I'm, well, and I'm going to do my disclaimer earlier. If I say Samuel L. Jackson, it's it's <laughs> purely a mistake. You'll you'll have to help me out in the editing. Is that something um, that you do as a joke, and then now it becomes like actual like a, a thing that slips out? It can. It can <laughs> yeah. at times. But, yeah. Uh, um, you know, uh, it, it's it's always fascinated me. Um, you know this this subject of Samuel Johnston, because um, 
here he is. He's he's a topographical engineer. He's on the engineering staff. Um, and, and we'll talk a little bit about his background you know, as we get into it. But uh, uh, very, very experienced topographical engineer. Uh-huh. And uh, hangs out with the likes of uh, you know Hotchkiss and and a couple of other you know heavy hitters in the engineering side of things with the Army of Northern Virginia. So he so he's topographical a engineer, yep. map maker, basically, map right? Maker, yep. His he's, job is to understand the ground. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. So uh, Lee sends him to do this reconnaissance when? So it's early on the morning of July second is. The, the controversial um, uh, reconnaissance, but he's mm-hmm. actually uh, all the way up into Pennsylvania. He and and others on the staff are doing reconnaissance, you know, not only to find out what they can about the enemy and where they are, but also roads, waterways, mountain passes, right. you know, anything that has to do with moving an army or logistics, these guys have to know about it. You got to know where you're going to send a 20,000 man core before mm-hmm. you send them. Yeah. 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 We, you know, we move them across a map really easy because it's two dimensional. Right. They get there really quick. Right. Uh, that, right. Doesn't, that doesn't happen in reality. Yeah. Because you got road condition. Yeah. Right. Size yeah. of road. All these things you have to take into account. Just, yeah. Accessibility. You yeah. Know, uh, because moving, you know, 10, 15,000 men is a pretty big deal. Plus the wagons and artillery and everything yep. else. All that, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so so he's been doing this all along, and Lee says to him, what, I want you to go and scout what? Yeah, there, you know, there's no good movie line reference, right? So, uh, <laughs> right, right. No reference at all. No reference at no. all. But, um, um, you know, so as far as the battle is concerned, you know, July 1st, uh, the Confederate Army will drive the Union Army back uh, to the heights of Cemetery Hill, Culp's Hill, you know, and and they're starting to get into the fish hook line. They're not mm-hmm. quite there yet, uh, of course, on the afternoon and evening of July 1st. But more and more troops continue to show up. So Lee's got to figure out how is he going to attack Meade the next day? Because obviously they have not driven them past Cemetery Hill. And, uh, you know, Lee, Lee knows Meade's on the high ground. He's going to have to dislodge them. I think he uses that word several times mm-hmm. uh, in his official report, you know, in order to dislodge the enemy. In other words, you get them running down the uh, the Baltimore Pike, mm-hmm. you know, and then Lee wins the battle. Right. So uh, in order to be able to do that, Lee needs to understand how he can position uh, his fresh troops, in this case, uh, those under James Longstreet, to uh, mass an attack. He wants to attack the flank, the left flank of the Union Army. And so he is going to turn to Samuel Johnston to find out uh, what Johnston can go learn about road, you know, the road network, the fields, and the topography, you know, uh, the the heights, the low ground, all of that, in order to be able to move those troops without being seen uh, into position to be able to make that attack. Um, Now, part of the controversy is, you know, there's there's some words that uh, you, you may have heard of something called the sunrise attack. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, which Johnston really provides us, you know, some excellent proof that that wasn't Lee's plan because it's sunrise on July 2nd when Johnston goes to make his reconnaissance. Right. right. So how can Lee have ordered that if, uh, if he doesn't send him out until the next day, you know, on July 2nd to, uh, to go find out where he's supposed to uh, move these troops. So secondary to the lay of the land, the roads, all that stuff is, uh, are there any troops there, and what is the disposition of the army on the left? Is that also part of it? That that would be a reasonable assumption, but yeah. I think you know one of the one of the aspects uh, as we try to get into Robert E. Lee's thinking here is revealed in his official report, and um, you know uh, Jim Hessler and uh, Bert Eisenberg wrote a great book about Gettysburg's Peach Orchard, mm-hmm. and they refer to this part of the order, and I think it's significant here as well. And uh, I, I have the order, um, you know, from from Robert E. Lee. He, he gave me a copy of it. <laughs> that was nice of him. <laughs> it was nice of him. Uh, you know, Lee's Lee's official report states that uh, preparations for the attack were not completed until the afternoon of the second. The enemy held a high and commanding ridge along which he massed a large amount of artillery, which of course we know is Cemetery Ridge. Right. 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 Uh, in front of General Longstreet, the enemy held a position from which, if he could be driven, it was thought our artillery could be used to advantage 
in assailing the more elevated ground beyond and thus enable us to reach the crest of the ridge. Okay. Okay. So, in other words, if we can get our troops into a position where we can drive the enemy from their position, if we can take the peach orchard, take that high ground, and amass our our troops, we can continue on to Cemetery Ridge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, From, uh, From one ridge to another. Right, from, just swoop from down a from high ground, one ridge, commanding ground. Yep, to the next ridge. Yeah, okay. Dislodging the Union army, mm-hmm. getting them on the run. Okay, so and and Lee's used to this, right? Every every battle that that he's commanded, uh, you know, for the past year, uh, they, all, they see the backs of the Union army right. running away. Right, you know. Right, and so why wouldn't he think he couldn't do it here? Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's perfectly okay. fair and makes a lot of sense. Yeah. 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 So. Um, you know, as we as we kind of dissect what what happened with Johnston, uh, one of the things that we'll talk about is what was the expectation of Robert E. Lee when Johnston came back to make his report. Okay. Okay. Um, so, a couple of different different players that maybe we should uh, take a second and talk about. Sure. Uh, the first, of course, being Samuel R. Johnston himself, and uh, Samuel Johnston uh, he joins into Confederate service on February 10th, 1862. He's a second lieutenant in the 6th Virginia Cavalry. Okay, and uh, Jeb Stewart thinks pretty highly of him and uh, will help advance his career. He thinks that uh, um, Johnston is actually a very good, uh, as far as reconnaissance, in fact, he states, Johnston is a soldier who possesses remarkable qualifications for the post of military engineers. A military engineer, his recommendations are very high. I respectfully submit this special request on behalf of one of Virginia's worthiest sons. He is sober. Indefati- that helps. <laughs> yeah, it's always good to be sober yeah. when you're, you're checking things out. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I can't, I, I'll have tro- trouble pronouncing this word. Indefatigable. Indefatigable. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. English is my second language. Uh, it's my incapable. third. So, um, so, and know, capable? And capable. Not incapable. No, and mm-hmm. capable. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. So, so Stuart pretty, thinks pretty highly of this guy. Sure. Okay. Good um, recommendation. Yep. He's he's promoted to captain in August of 62. And uh, by August of 64, he's promoted to major. And in September of 64, he becomes a lieutenant colonel. Okay, so his his rise through the ranks is, is going to continue even after Gettysburg. Um and he was paroled as a lieutenant colonel. Okay. So, you know, I've, I've seen different people as they talk about this subject saying, well, Lee must not have thought much of this guy because, um, you know, he really screwed up at Gettysburg. Yeah. That's uh, far from the case uh, of truth. You know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about their relationship. But it's clear from his promotions that he actually does good work and is, and is constantly promoted throughout the entire war. Yeah. Although, I mean, it would make sense for a government job to screw up at Gettysburg and get promoted, <laughs> you know, so I mean, whatever. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll put that in this column over here for, uh, for dissection later. But, but I, I'm, I don't think, I don't think that he was as bad as people say, so I'm not making that argument, but go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, his job as he gets up into Pennsylvania, you know, uh, as I mentioned, he's, he's with Hotchkiss. Mm-hmm. Uh, they actually go, um, you know, he and Jedediah Hotchkiss and others uh, go up to Harrisburg. Um, so I think if you look at the Hotchkiss diary, there's references made to several of these guys up towards Harrisburg. Uh, is that with, with Yule or is this Yule? before the campaign? Yep. No, with Yule. Okay. As part of the, um, you know, the, the um, uh, advance into Pennsylvania. Right. And, uh, you know, our, uh, our friend... Uh, Jedediah Hotchkiss is actually ob- obtaining paper, mm. uh, and, he, and he actually, I think in, in his diary, writes that he obtained some paper in Papertown. Oh. Where, where else would you go to where get paper? Where else right? would you get it? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So um, for those that might not know, Papertown is actually Holly Springs. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, All right. Paper production is there. and uh, I hope paper production would be there. Well, in Papertown. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. Yeah. You know, if you go to Papertown, you can't get any paper. Got a big problem. That's tough. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where Pencil Town was. You, know? <laughs> <That> was, <laughs> you need pencils by to go to paper. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, it's it's kind of interesting. There's there's some 
folks that I was talking to that have, have seen different Hotchkiss maps and, um, you know, the Hotchkiss collection and whatnot. And, um, you know, reference was made that uh, um, a, a map that was done in 64 was actually done on paper obtained from Paper Town. There's a, a you know, ink mark. Is that what they call it? Oh, yeah, like a watermark. watermark. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. From watermark. Paper Town. Yeah. From Paper Town. Huh. So, the Paper Town paper mill. So they get a lot of good paper <laughs> in Paper Town. Sure. Yeah. And you need paper. Yeah. So it's good to have. Yeah. That's right. So they, so they get a big uh, cache of uh, paper. Yep. In Paper Town, on their way up to, I, so, so they're going up. I mean, how many of them of them are there with Hotchkiss and Johnston? Well, um, in in the small group that we're talking about, probably could could identify three or four. Three um, or four, yeah, and that, so that Hotchkiss talks about. Okay. Okay. So let's say let's uh, imagine that maybe there, there might be a dozen. Okay. Okay. All right. I don't know. Just throw in a dozen, right? Yeah. Okay. So there's a dozen of them. And their job is to go up with Yule and what? Like, like make sure that just the road ahead Yule is okay? Or are they also looking, you know, in the area that the cores would eventually go on? So in other words, uh, what's Route 30 today? Yes. And all those were like, would they, would they have like been kind of spread out and just feeling around ahead of Yule and to the flank of Yule and yeah. so they're, yeah. they're everywhere. It's like a dozen guys just, or even four. Yeah. Guys. I don't know that we have a specific count. Uh, we do know that the, the staffs were, were lower sure. in number in the Confederate army than they were in the union army. Right. But uh, these officers, it's their job to understand road networks, waterways, Bridges, this railroads, is a lot of work. topography. It is. I mean, you, you consider, you know, from Chambersburg up to Harrisburg, and then all the the ground to cover in between mountain that. Mountain passes. Mountain and, passes, yeah. yeah, and yeah. all these roads and where yeah. they go. I mean, it's just yeah, Waterways. Crazy. But primarily, they need to know if you have to move an army, not a Chris army, but a regular <laughs> army. You know? uh, yeah. If you have to move an army, uh, you got to know where to tell them to go. Sure. And, and how to get there. That makes sense. And figure out about how long it's going to take. So, know, so logistics. So how long are they up with Yule? Are they, are they with him all the way into when the battle starts? Well, or? it's dated um, June 28th, I believe, in Hotchkiss's diary. Um, what is that? That, that they're up in, in uh, they're near Harrisburg. Near Harrisburg. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he also talks about in Chambersburg getting some map making supplies. So, you know, I'm, I'm thinking pencils. You know, and just different compasses. Anything you need to do, you know, to use to make a map. Um, do they reunite with Lee when the battle is already underway, or do they leave ahead of Yule and come back to Lee? Well, not sure on Hotchkiss. I have to look at the diary, but I do know that um, uh, Johnston makes reference to doing some reconnaissance in Gettysburg on July first. Okay, so um, and he's actually out with a man named William Proctor Smith. Okay, and and I, I've got a cool picture of William Proctor Smith here that I can can show you. So he he, he does reconnaissance wow. while Buf while the the Union Army is here. Now you say wow, that's a really cool picture, Chris. You you say that part. Wow, and, that's a really cool picture, Chris. Yeah, yeah, and now your audience knows that you're looking. I'm at looking a at a picture of William Proctor Smith. <laughs> wow, look at him. He's. Yeah. Dashing, he's a isn't he? dashing devil. Dashing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He reminds yeah. me of somebody though, uh, like a 20th century movie star, like classic Hollywood. Hmm. Who who does it look like to you? I, I got nothing. Hold him up again. Let me okay. see. All right. See, maybe Eric might have a. Yeah. Um, was it the, like the skinny guy from Laurel and Hardy? Is that who I'm thinking? <laughs> Is that who it looks like? Did, Did you, you say modern? Like uh, well, modern, modern like twentieth century. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't mean today, modern, yeah. but post Civil another, War. It's another fine mess you've gotten us into, <laughs> Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you've you've gotten the opportunity to see our our good friend William Proctor Smith, and mm -hmm. um, you know there's there's a couple different articles written on on this reconnaissance, um, because it it becomes important. Um, later on in the 19th century. It's not that important right after the battle. It's not that important right after the war. Uh, it's not until James Longstreet actually writes a, uh, an article for the Philadelphia Times, and, and in that he references something about Johnston's reconnaissance. 
okay. Johnston being with him. I forget exactly what the the circumstances were, which causes uh, Lafayette McClaws to write to Samuel Johnston and say, "Tell me what you remember about this." Okay, so so wait, let's l- give a little background into what this is here that you're talking the, about. About this the is, reconnaissance. It's thing. after the no, but I mean the the personalities here that you're talking about. Okay. Longstreet McClaws. Okay, what is Longstreet? write about Johnston and why? Well, he's writing about, you know, this, this sunrise attack order, which uh-huh. is all part of the lost cause narrative. Right. Okay. So and, he's and defending himself. He's, he's defending okay. himself. He's, he's kind of writing his views on it. Okay. And, you know, he raises some questions, one of them being, you know, um, uh, Johnston's reconnaissance. And that causes um, Confederate General Lafayette McClaws to then you know, write to uh, Samuel Johnston to get some clarification. Okay. Because McClaws is against Longstreet. Is that what you're saying? Well, you know, McClaws, I think in this, in this case is really just trying to get to the bottom of it. Okay. Because, you know, after, um, or towards the, the latter part of the war, McClaws and, and Longstreet aren't really seeing eye to eye. They've right. been good friends and, and so on. But, you know, he's trying to, trying to understand. And I find it kind of interesting that some of these guys, will write each other, you know, whether it's based on a letter for, that was written at John Batchelder that was, was then shared with somebody, you know, they'll write each other and say, well, what do you remember about that? Well, this is what I remember. Let me ask you a bunch of questions. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I should back up a little bit and tell you that the only period writings that, that have been located that we've actually have, and in and, and some of these letters, we don't have the full copies of the letters, there are four letters. Okay. That's it. In the entire historiography of Samuel Johnston and, and where he went and what he did can be seen in four letters until something else is discovered. Uh, do they refer to other letters in these four letters that we don't have? In some cases, there's a response to a letter, and we do have the original letter that was written. Okay. You know, uh, asking some questions. We have at least okay. one example of that. Gotcha. Okay, but for the most part, it was, you know, hey, Sam, what do you remember from that day? Okay, and what did he remember? Well, uh, we'll, we'll get okay, to that. We'll get to we'll, that, okay, yeah, okay. All will be revealed, okay. or not. <laughs> or, or not, if we remember to, yeah, we'll yeah. reveal it. The, uh, you know, well, you know, really, uh, you know, I get asked a lot, you know, where, where did Samuel Johnston go? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, you know, did, did he do what he was supposed to do? Yeah, I think he did what he was supposed to do. But at the end of the day, there's just a whole lot about this we don't know. Yeah. Because think about it. This is just another day at the office for these guys. You're a topographical engineer, topographical engineer, not a topogizio engineer. <laughs> Boy, that's really going to get some of your audience members wondering who topogizio is, isn't it? It's got me wondering. <laughs> so, yeah, right. Okay. So this so, is like par for the course. This is what you do every day. Average day. And to, to us, especially people who only studied the Battle of Gettysburg, this sounds like a momentous thing. It, it does sound like yes. a momentous thing. But um, to Sam Johnston, he went to to bed on July 1st. Uh, he does talk about he and William Proctor Smith going out and making a reconnaissance. They get back in the evening and they have their dinner and they, they go to sleep. Yeah. And Lee wakes him up at four in the morning. Now, wait. So the reconnaissance on July 1st, you said they're in Gettysburg. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I'm guessing this is after the Confederates have taken it? It is. Yeah, yeah, it, okay. It would be. And and don't really have any timing as far as you know. Is is Johnston riding with Lee? You know, are they come? Have they come down with Ewell? And now they've joined up with Lee at the the Thompson House. Gotcha. Okay. Once the seminary line has collapsed, I think yeah. we can can um, you know say that that's probably what happened. Okay. Uh, they're joining General Lee, and and you know he's probably saying, "Hey, I need some reconnaissance around here," and you know he and and Billy Proctor Smith jump on the horses and go try to figure out. They've driven the Union Army back to Cemetery Ridge. Now they got to go figure out where, yeah, how, what, how do we move going troops on. to attack yeah. them? Because they know they got Longstreet and others waiting, right? On Route 30, they're, they're, they're waiting. <laughs> yes. And they're they're going to eventually come into the battle. Yeah. Where do you put them when where, they get here? Right. Where are they needed? How do we get them there? Yep. Yeah. So that's, okay. that's all part of their job. So, um, okay. So then, uh, 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 what, so this, re- and then they, they do this reconnaissance, they come back and then go to bed like they normally would or whatever. Now, July 2nd, this is the one that we're, this is the reconnaissance that we're focusing on here today. Right. Uh, 
get into that a little bit. So unless you have more, do you have more? Well, there's there's a couple of different articles written in Gettysburg Magazine, um, which I'm sure you subscribe to. And, Absolutely. And, yep. And, uh, you know, have all the issues, the back issues. I think they're on a number 63 now. Tons right? of them. Probably read them twice. Um, but there's a couple Before articles. Bed every night. You know, probably three or four articles that deal with this reconnaissance. Yeah. Because it wasn't necessarily a big deal to Samuel Johnston, but it's a big deal to us Gettysburg nuts, right? Sure. We, we really want to know. Yeah. And, and we'd love to see that letter of, here's the exact path I took. Here's exactly where I got to. Here's exactly what I saw. And here's exactly the time it happened. In. Right. We don't know any of that. We don't have that. Yep. So hope you've enjoyed the show. This has been great. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to you next time. Yeah. If you'd like to take a tour with any of these guides, please send an email to that address in Gettysburg.com. No, of course we've got more for you. Absolutely. And, so, and you know I'm a big multiple choice guy. Um, yes. You know, I, I can provide you with some multiple choice on just about every aspect of this battle. Um, because if you read one account, you know what's going on. If you read more than one account, you have confusements. The more so, you know, the less you understand. That's right. Yeah. So, um, so there was another reconnaissance that happened. Okay. Okay. Oh. Um, and it was remembered as being on July 2nd with Johnston, except Johnston doesn't remember that. Okay. Okay. Um, and that reconnaissance was done by William Pendleton. Sandy? Lee's, oh, no, William. 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 Yep, Lee's okay. chief of artillery. Yes. Okay. So why would he be going to do a reconnaissance? Got to know where to put those oh, yeah, guns, gotta, right? Yeah. yeah got to know where to put Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Right. 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 Yes. <laughs> <laughs> where do we place them? Right. So, um, so you know, they're, they're, they go do a reconnaissance for artillery positions. Um, and there's, uh, you know, some, some folks that are involved there, including a man named uh, George Peterkin. Peterkin, okay. yes. Reverend, right? Reverend. He later becomes a bishop. I mm. um, think Bishop of West Virginia, the first... Episcopalian Bishop of West Virginia. I didn't know Episcopalians had bishops. They do. Absolutely. I thought it was only a Catholic thing. No, no, no. no. Oh, no, no. oh yeah, no, because no. it's the Bishop of Canterbury, right? No, I mean, you know, uh, check out uh, Michael Curry, you know, Bishop, uh, you know, I think he's uh, the, the the big guy, uh, the Bishop for the Episcopal Church, a wonderful man. Uh, used to be a bishop in North Carolina at a church I went to there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Currently. Currently, he, yeah. Yeah, this, yeah. Isn't a this isn't a 19th War. century bishop. That, <laughs> like, what do you want me to do? Check out his grave? <laughs> oh, no. yeah. no, uh, Michael Curry's a wonderful man. But, uh, okay. Um, shout out to Michael Curry. Yeah, shout out to Michael Curry. I, I don't know if he listens to your podcast, but he should. Well, he should because he should. he'll hear his name on it. That's right. Yeah. 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 It's and, also and my favorite out, spice. Figure out how we tied an Episcopalian bishop of modern day <laughs> to, to the, the Battle of Gettysburg. Yeah, good. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, so, you know, George George Peterkin serves on um, William Pendleton's staff. Okay. Okay. Don't know if he, I don't really know what role he had, if he was a topographical engineer as well, but uh, he's certainly out there um, with it. And during Pendleton's reconnaissance, like I say, he thinks it happened on July 2nd. Mm -hmm. Others think it happened on July 1st. Okay, so multiple choice there. One of the things that happens is they capture two Union cavalrymen that are dismounted. Okay. Okay. So, you know, we know based on that fact that somewhere uh, it would be west of like where the Longstreet Tower is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, somewhere... Out there, there's some Union cavalrymen that are wandering around. John Buford writes about it in his report. You know, they're trying to make sure that the Confederates don't sneak up. They're not uh, just wandering. They're actually like... <laughs> they're doing reconnaissance yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, but wandering sounds, you know, a little more, uh, um, you know, like from the book of Exodus in the Bible. Uh -huh. You know, I've been trying to tie it back to Re Reverend Curry again. Is that all who wander are not lost or exactly. something like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, Is that uh, where that comes from? I don't know. I, I don't think I, that was from a T-shirt I saw. On yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have that on my uh, on my door so that yeah. when I leave the house, I remember yeah. you're not lost. Yeah, it's a good thing to remember. Yeah, you're yeah. just wandering. Yeah, but uh, John Buford's out doing reconnaissance as well. Sure. Okay, and these two guys get picked up uh, by Pendleton, and he. it sounds like he has quite a few people with him doing the reconnaissance for the artillery. Okay. But it, it, is he saying that Johnston was with him? Pendleton believes that Johnston was with him. Believes, but he's not sure. Well, he states that he oh, was. He says that he's sure. Yeah. Okay. Peter, Peterkin is not sure. Aha. Peterkin writes a letter to 
Samuel Johnston says, can you tell me what you remember about the reconnaissance? You know, uh-huh. he doesn't say, I don't think you were with us. Um, but McClaws, I think it is, will write something in reference to Pendleton. Pendleton will give a speech about not the reconnaissance, but uh, the aspects of it. Okay. Um, you know, saying that uh, uh, Johnston was with them. And hmm. McClaws will write to Johnston and say, is that what happened? And um, Johnston will reply, uh, you know, Pendleton must be mistaken. You know, I, I was not. When I did my reconnaissance, there was only three or four of us. Right. And so we only know who one of those other people were. And that's uh, a man by the name of Clark. And he was, uh, Clark was uh, Longstreet's, uh, one of his engineers. Makes sense, because yeah. Longstreet's going to be the one going down there, right? Right, right. So you would bring one of his guys. Yeah. And in fact, I think Johnston writes something along the lines of he didn't really know that anybody would be going with him. And all of a sudden, here's this uh, Clark guy. Okay. okay. And then they, what, they have like an aide or two with them? Uh, could be an aide, could be somebody local that's trying to show them some of the road network. Uh, we don't know. Okay. They're, they're not identified. Don't know if they were Confederate soldiers. Don't know if they were some locals. So again, about four know. people, about maybe. four people. Okay. Yep. Which is good. You don't want yep. a big group of people. Well, and and this is where we learn, uh, and you've probably read this in, in a couple of different accounts, uh, uh, or a couple of different stories, that Robert E. Lee does not believe in a huge reconnaissance. You know, he's not going to send a, a regiment or brigade of cavalry, mm. you know, along that line because it would make too much noise. You know, you kick up you too much dust. It. Yeah. It's not paved roads like we have today. Uh, no. Right. No, it's not. Um, a lot of it's field and fences that they have to go over and, you know, get around. So, um, but Lee, apparently somewhere along the way, don't know if it was during this exchange on July 2nd, um, Lee shares with Johnston that he really believes in a small reconnaissance force because that's how they did it in the, the Mexican war. Mm. And they could get to where they needed to get and get back a lot of times undetected. Undetected, yeah. Yeah. That's the key. Yeah. So <clears throat> when they go, what time is it that they leave? So Johnston's woken up at, uh, he says, sunrise, so approximately four. Um, no he, daylight savings time back then. Correct. So f- it's four o'clock. Yeah. Now it's like, what, five when the sun starts coming up-ish? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. All right. So, so back then it's four o'clock. Yep. And um, he figures he is underway by about 4.30. Yeah. Yep. Now- <clears throat> I'm going to guess 445, 450. Closer to five is what I'm I, guessing. I'm going with 438 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, because people like to be accurate. It's oddly right? specific. Yes. But yes, okay, okay, 438 or 450. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, what do you think? You want to weigh in on a vote yeah. here? I'm going with... What What time does Sam Johnson... Leave? 441 and 29 seconds. Okay. All right. Closest All right. without going over. All, All right. right. Go ahead. So we'll see who the winner is at the end, right? <laughs> All right. Yeah. So go ahead. Yeah. What do you... So, um, you know, one of the things that, that Johnston tells us... Oh, I want to say one mm. other thing about Graham. because uh, Clark, I mean. Uh, he goes by a couple different names. One is John J. Graham Clark. Okay. Uh, you see him written as, I think, John G. Clark. John J. Clark. Um, you know, so for years people have looked at, you know, try to see if he left any writings about this okay. as the only other person that rode with Johnston that we've identified, right? Uh-huh. Uh, he doesn't because um, in 1880, uh, he gets hit by a train. Mm. And Ouch. So uh, he's he's killed and uh, did not leave any writings. So we, we have to take his chess piece off the board now. Okay, okay so he... Can't help us at all. Can't help us at all. Okay. Okay. And it was John Jacob Jingleheimer. Who was that? Yeah, John Jacob Jingleheimer <laughs> Schmidt Clark. Clark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Clark. Got it. Okay. Um, and and I learned that um, you know he was buried in Hollywood Cemetery in Richmond in mm. an unmarked grave. Mm. And um, I, I was told that there was an effort. I don't know if it's been done. An effort to uh, mark the grave. Interesting. So, yeah. Just a little little tidbit there, right? Sure. Yeah, Everybody so, likes tidbits. Yeah. Yeah. So. They set off on their journey. Okay. Okay. So we we know that from um, Johnston's information in the letters that he rode about four miles. Well, we, from 
Well, where? Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Well, from the seminary. Okay. Okay. So his tent is is near Lee's headquarters. Right. Okay. So um, four miles. <clears throat> what we don't know is is that four miles round trip, mm. or four miles each way. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, I'm going to submit to you. I believe it was four miles each way. Uh, yeah, that's what I was okay. assuming as soon as you said that. I yeah. assumed it was yeah. four miles because four but, miles round trip. It's pretty short. Where's he going? Yeah. Not very far. Yeah. He'd get to probably about the, a uh, little bit beyond the peach orchard and back. Because, I mean, if you, right, oh, yeah, that's about two miles? Yeah, it's it's two miles, I think. Uh, could, as the crow flies, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but he's not going as the crow flies. No. No. And he's certainly not going up the uh, the Weefield Road or uh, Millerstown Road there. Yeah. yeah four cause. miles even sounds like not enough. Yeah. Four miles is going to take you um, down about where the Emmitsburg Road and the, the um, uh, do you know where the sixth Pennsylvania monument is on the Emmitsburg Road? Uh, Eric, do you know? You Eric, do? Eric's nodding. Good for you, Eric. Eric. Where is yeah, it? It's yeah. just south of the uh, uh, the restrooms. Yes. On the Emmitsburg Road. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. the way down there. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, okay. So that's... Is that Sixth Pennsylvania Cavalry? Yes. That's why yeah, I didn't know, because you didn't Russia's say Cavalry. Oh, I'm sorry, God Eric. bless America. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, Matt. You're Matt. <laughs> I'm right? Matt, yeah. That's what your name is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Matt. Yeah. How many times have we done this? <laughs> yeah. So... Okay, so that that's pretty far. And, and, and I'm sorry. Now go back and say that again okay, from the beginning. So what what gets you down there? So or what did you say? If if you go on Google Earth and you mm. start to mess around with that, you know, um, you can look at two miles how far down that is. You can look at four miles in a direct line along Seminary Ridge, at least for the first part of it. Right. Okay. Um, so you know you can fiddle around with that and now, get some ideas. C- could it be? That he says four miles, and he is correct. It's not four miles of zigzagging road, but it's four miles from the seminary to where he went. D- directionally. As, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm going to submit to you the guy's a topographical engineer. So he would He knows uh, how long he was gone, and he knows how many miles he went. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. So, fair I don't, enough. you know, I don't, I don't know that we can really dispute that so much. Has that okay. stopped us before? No. No. And it won't stop us again. <laughs> so, yep. uh, okay. So, but it does so, add to our multiple choice. Right? Yes, right. Exactly. Okay. We do know um, from other reports and other things that are going on that um, several things are, are happening. And in, in, uh, what I, uh, I, I use a term by uh, Lieutenant Colonel Bill Hewitt, retired, uh, mm-hmm. called the Kabuki Dance. Mm-hmm. There's all sorts of things happening with Union troops at this time. Right. That... Um, that are going to aid in Johnston's ride as far as him not being seen. Okay, necessarily. L- let, let me let me catch us up, and then I have a okay. question, and okay. I don't want to confuse the audience by going here because it's a little. All right, so first day's over. Confederates have the town. The Union has rallied on Cemetery Hill. The remnants of the First and Eleventh Corps, excuse me, are. Um, on Cemetery Hill and then through like that swale between Cemetery and Culp's Hill and a little bit of Culp's Hill, right? Right. What other cores by nightfall, not throughout the night, but by nightfall, is there any other core that is up? Uh, by nightfall, you- In the Union Army. You're starting to, by, by the time July 1st goes into July 2nd, mm-hmm. you have the third core that's mostly up. So by midnight. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, and, and others on the way. <clears throat> Lee, Lee's last visible- um, I guess Lee's last look at the Union Army before it's all dark puts the the left flank of the Union Army where? So somewhere along uh, Cemetery Ridge, like maybe a little bit north of the Pennsylvania the Memorial. Yeah. Okay, yeah, monument, whatever. Um, okay, so that's the last thing he's seen. But he wants to know, and of course he's not an idiot, so I'm sure he knows that there's probably going to be an extension of that line because there's troops coming in overnight. I mean, yeah. you know, he's done this before. So he wants to know exactly what's going on, right? Right. One thing um, you don't hear often when or when you read about this or something is where is the right flank of the Confederate Army resting? Okay. So after they push the Union troops through town, um, the the right flank is extended down by men of Scales Brigade and uh, Lane's Brigade of Pender's troops, mm-hmm. and they go into a um, a skirmish line, 
basically, and they extend that down to try to protect uh, their right. Okay, so two brigades go into what's today Long Lane. Got it. Okay, okay. so that's uh, by the Rec Park, that the area Park. there. Yep. And two, behind Colt Park, which is that neighborhood behind McDonald's on Steinware Avenue. Yes. Just giving the listener an yep. idea. Okay, yeah. go ahead. And then they extend um, two brigades of uh, skirmishers down. So depending on how, how you want to measure that, you know, you get to have multiple choice here, too. Um, some people have that just past the area known as the Bliss Farm area. Uh, okay. Others extend it all the way down. Um, I've even seen, you know, one, one thought out there that uh, extends it down almost to the Snyder Farm which is right where the hmm. uh, Confederate Avenue crosses the Emmitsburg Road. Mm -hmm. That's pretty far down. That is pretty far. But you're yeah. saying it's two brigade, like two full brigades on a skirmish line um, or two brigades worth of skirmishers? Uh, Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so remember, um, Scales in particular um, you know, takes a, a pretty heavy beating on July 1st. Uh, so they're down to about 500 guys. Phew. So I'm not sure that that all of them are on the skirmish line. Right. Uh, okay. Probably stronger, um, um, in in lane side of things, you mm -hmm. know, than mm -hmm. uh, than uh, than scales, who's now under uh, William Laurent, I think is mm -hmm. uh, his name. And where do you think, in your mind, where where do you think that skirmish line ends? I think it ends between the North Carolina Monument and the Virginia Monument. In my head, that's what makes yeah. the most sense. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, now, so that's on Seminary Ridge. Yes. Going west from Seminary Ridge to guard against Union troops coming around, making this wide sweep um, and getting in their right rear. Are there any, is there any skirmish line or anything to protect that avenue of attack? Um, no. Okay. No, I, other than, you know, by the time you get to the Fairfield Road, you do have Confederate troops that are starting to fill in. I okay. think um, uh, Kershaw gets started like at four in the morning. Okay, uh, which will end up being you know part of the counter march later in the day. Right, uh, Longstreet's counter march. So y you do have activity along the Fairfield Road and in that area uh -huh. that has a lot of Confederates there. So there there are troops there, but they may not be on guard to protect the right rear flank of the whole army. Like right. There's no skirmish line set no. up or anything out there. Okay. No. So the reason I'm asking is because I'm I'm just wondering how much of that uh, journey for Johnston can he do with relative ease and security and not have to like creep around every corner yeah you know and so that's what i'm just trying to get ahead of. Probably so about like the first third of it okay because we do know that buford has patrols mm -hmm. that are going down the millerstown road and, okay and buford's or he refers to his uh his patrols is going out almost as far as fairfield okay okay, okay. pretty far yeah um which is you know when you look at standard operating procedure for these cavalry patrols that makes sense sure sure okay in addition to that, and this will come into play later, I believe that uh, Buford has uh, some of his patrols that have set up in the Snyder House, so right where that crossing is. Okay. Okay? Uh-huh. Um, it's because of that, I think that becomes a very difficult place for Samuel Johnston to have crossed. Okay. So because let's- probably would run into Union Cavalry there real easy. Yeah. So let's get there. So now let's say he leaves, uh, let's let's just go with uh, 438. Okay. Um, <laughs> and, and 30 seconds, 29 seconds, 30 seconds. What was it? 29 seconds. 29 seconds. Okay. <laughs> okay. All, right. All right. So 438 uh, and 29 seconds, he actually gets going on the road. The first third of it he can do with relative speed and ease and security. Uh, but then once he gets out past uh, the uh, Kershaw and, and all that stuff, and, 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 and certainly when he gets passed out past the uh, gets out past the uh, skirmish line from uh, Lane's Brigade, would you say Lane's Brigade or Scales? Well, so... Seminary Ridge is separating them. Yes. Okay. So, okay. So they don't. He doesn't, he doesn't see, them. see them unless he's going along the ridge line. Would he? That, oh, okay. That far. So he might be going along the ridge. We don't there's, know. There's he doesn't say what roads he yeah. took. What he refers to is he said I I use the same roads that General Longstreet later took, which makes sense. Okay. So that tells us probably like. Uh, Willoughby Run Road, mm -hmm. possibly, uh, or uh, 
um, you know, the road that's leading to the uh, the Pitzer Schoolhouse. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Black Horse Tavern Road. Yeah, Black yeah. Horse Tavern Road, and, and, you know, where you have the Troublesome Hill. Yes, yes. And, and it could be, you know, part of the reason that later on the Troublesome Hill becomes troublesome is Johnston's seeing that at, at 4.30 in the morning. There's nobody on Little Round Top to identify, a, hey, look, there, there's a signal station mm-hmm. or troops up there that can see us. And, and uh, I'm guessing, because I would never get up that early on purpose, but uh, I would imagine that the sun is coming up behind the round top somewhat. It's a little bit more, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, but it's still, the sun is behind them, and so that slope of little round top would still be in shadow. So I don't know, it depends on how bright well, the sun was that day. And okay, let me let me throw another one at you. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. It is extremely foggy that morning. Oh, okay. so we got fog now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so introduce fog. The fog of war. The fog of war. Mm-hmm. The actual fog the of act- war. <laughs> like literally flo- <laughs> fog of war. Yeah. And okay. I, and I think that's a big part mm-hmm. as to why Johnston can go uh, where he you know, where he wants without necessarily, um, you know, being seen. See, but, I think that's important to get these, these details in there because, you know, we listen, we picture Gettysburg on a bright, sunny day because exactly. that's when we love to come and visit and that's up, but, but yeah. it's not always a bright, sunny day. No. Um, <clears throat> in fact, gosh, five or six years ago, I got up early on July 2nd mm-hmm. and, uh, just to see what weather conditions would look like. And it was actually foggy that day too. Yeah. Yeah. And I was at the Shurfee house, and I couldn't see the monuments across the street. There you go. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that's what it was exactly that morning, but we have three or four descriptions of it being a very foggy morning. You okay. know, the air was heavy kind of thing. Yeah. And so, that happens a lot in the summertime. Yeah. This all sounds like fake news to me. <laughs> Everybody knows that it is perpetually perfect noon and yeah. perfectly clear it's, in it's, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. It's always sunny, on little, new. Yeah. always sunny on Little Round. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a series, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, Danny that's, DeVito's in there. Right. right. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to shoot that here. Um, so what else does that tell us, though? Is if it's foggy and Johnston is, is able to use that fog to his advantage, wherever he gets to, is the fog burned off? Can he see what, right. what he's supposed to see? Right. I don't know. There's a good multiple choice. Well, sure, that's well, worth at least what a beer or two at the uh, at, at the, the uh, local the mine watering hole. Uh, you know to, to talk about right. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, so he takes whatever route he takes to get there. The, mm-hmm. Let's say the one that Longstreet yep. takes later, which makes sense. Yep. Uh, what? Wh- where does he? He claims that he gets to the slope of Round Top. Yes. Now get into this a little okay. bit here. All right. Round top, little round top, big round top. Today, those are the t- those are those are two different things, yep. and they mean two different places. Yeah. Um, and I'll throw Devil's Den in there too. But back then, when they say round top, what are they referring to? Uh, big round top. Big round top. Yeah. And. Uh, uh, did the locals refer to just that whole area as Round Top? That's that's part of it. Yeah, I yeah. think some did. And now this is really a Tim Smith kind of question, and, okay. and he could give you you know three hours on on the just name the of Little term, Round Top right. and Big Round Top. But, right, right, right. But I think most people referred to Little Round Top as uh, Sugarloaf as, yeah. as one of the names. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, or or the Little Rocky Top. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and that's a shout out to all our Vols fans. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Eric, you want to do a resounding edition of uh, Rocky Top for us? Oh, no, yeah. thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and decline. Okay, well, you know, uh, having spent time in Knoxville myself, I can tell you it's a really, you know, it's, it's fun to, to just sing Rocky Top at a basketball game. But Eric digress. loves singing Rocky Top. Yeah. Wherever he yeah. is. Yeah, not but accurate. Yeah. He d- <laughs> no? <laughs> um, so, you know, get... The, the, By the way, that cough is not Corona; it's allergies. Okay, good. Yeah, good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't make you come in here if I had the Rona or any symptoms. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, so you know, um, it it really, um, you know, it can be said that it doesn't really matter what they called it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one of the the things to explore, and and this is better done in person is to take a look at the maps of the time. Mm. Because one of the things that the the maps tell us um, is, is the map that most of the troops were using, the local Adams County 1858 map, does not have 
any topographical features on it. Mm. Yeah. So it's just like, yeah, it's just little dots with farms and roads. Here's your and road, like here's that. your yeah. farm. Yeah. So <laughs> if you don't have any topographical features, you know, um, uh, and you're, you're sitting with Robert E. Lee and showing him where you went, if, if that's the map that he's using, you can't say, yes, I got to Little Round Top. There it is right on the map. But we don't know what map he was using. We don't know what map right. he was using. Okay. Yeah. So, so we'll, we'll get to that later. Yeah. But. So now um, Buford's Cavalry, mm-hmm. you know, um, in the, the popular history, I guess, you uh, you hear about Buford's Cavalry during the first day. And then as soon as Reynolds comes up and gets shot, you don't hear anything about Buford anymore for the most part. But uh, July 1st, um, when the infantry comes up, Buford's division is split on right flank and left flank of the, the army, right? right. Mm-hmm. Okay. When uh, they all go back to Cemetery Hill and that line is starting to form, where does Buford's cavalry go? Well, um, Buford is actually asked to go out and help out. Okay. Help so, out. Yeah. So, uh, and, I, and I'm going to bring you to this part of July 1st only because I love this quote. Okay. Um, you know, he's, he's ordered, um, you know, so he receives an order that he's got to go back out uh-huh. to Seminary Ridge. Right. Because the Confederates are starting to extend down and have the possibility, if they kept going, of flanking Cemetery Hill. Hmm. And Buford is said to have risen up in his stirrups and reply, what in hell and damnation does he expect me to do with those long lines of troops out there? <laughs> and he sits back down in the saddle and he brings his troops out to uh, what's kind of the area now of the um, the, the 1938 uh, Cannon Restoration Building there, the the uh, uh, um, maintenance building. The maintenance building. Yeah. Yeah. Armory. Thank you. Oh, the armory. Yeah. Out on Semi- yeah. Seminary Ridge. Yeah. Which is now the Cannon Restoration. Yeah. Oh, okay. Facility. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Jeez. So Buford. That's you know, close. And his men are going to dismount behind the stone wall. And there's a big discussion about lane forming squares. And we can have that talk sometime. But, but that's oh, okay. but that's earlier so, on, though. So that's July 1st. Yeah. You know, when they finally get back to um, Cemetery Hill. Oh, wait. I lost uh, it. Did I just. Yeah. So now Buford's job is to continue to protect the left, okay, of the Union line. Okay. Yeah. So um, he is put partially into bivouac, but partially his job is to essentially protect the Millerstown Road and the Peach Orchard area. Okay. Okay. That intersection. Uh, the reason for that is you have Third Corps troops that are coming up uh, from Emmitsburg. From Emmitsburg. Okay, and you want to make sure that that they're protected while they get into position. Because the that intersection uh, is the Emmitsburg Road, so they're mm-hmm. obviously going to be coming up from that. Yep. But um, also, the Millerstown Road runs roughly east and west, and the Confederates could use that as a way to get to the flank of the. So, it would right. be pr- protecting for many reasons. Is so, it is it the whole division that's down there, or is it split in half still? Well, um, we know that the the sixth New York and the ninth. Um, New York. New York is is down there. I don't recall if it's the whole division. I have to look at the map on it. Okay. Not important. I'm just wondering. But my point is that there are Union cavalry units down in that area by the Peach Orchard. Yes. Um, So And and those two regiments are important because they are, along with uh, some of the infantry regiments of the 3rd Corps, are providing that protection of the left flank while the rest of the 3rd Corps gets up. And Johnston, it, he, so we don't, we don't know for sure what his route was. Correct. Because he doesn't know for sure, or did he not leave anything? Well, he, or? he traced his route for Lee. Uh-huh. Um, but when he's writing about it, you know, what, 30 years later, um, he doesn't, he's not that descriptive. In other words, he doesn't have a map in front of him. He never left a tracing saying, here's the the road network that I took, right. only that I took the road that Longstreet used. Right, okay. Okay, so from that, we know it's Black Horse Tavern Road at least. Right. Um, and then he's, doesn't he say to McClaws um, in one of the letters something about, uh, I came out onto the ridge roundabout where you lined up yeah, where, later that day? Yeah. Yeah, and then proceeded from there south across yeah. the Emmitsburg Road in the area yeah. of the Bushman Farm. Yeah, I mean if you if you follow his his uh, writing in the letter of, of where he said he went, right? Um, it it does kind of come out near the Snyder House, 
mm-hmm. okay, which is at where the intersection of Confederate Avenue and the Emmitsburg Road is. So on the west side of the Emmitsburg Road. And he does make reference, you know, that it goes down towards Slider Lane. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, from there, says, uh, in one of the letters, I think he says, he actually says, I got up to the little round top. Yeah, he even mentions where where Farnsworth's charge was. Well, he, he doesn't say he, Farnsworth. No, but he says he there says was a, a cavalry, cavalry charge. charge. And that's on his return trip back. Right. Yeah. So is that not Farnsworth he's referring to? It could be. Um, or it could be it the... Could be merit. Yeah. Yeah. So we we don't know for sure, um, but we don't know for sure, and I'm, I'm probably going to get a lot of excitement going over this. We don't, in my opinion... You're assuming sure. people listen. Yeah, yes, if, if, they haven't, if they haven't shut it off by now. Uh, or gone back to the Tom Berger episode. Yeah, right. Listen to that one twice. Right. Um, Six hours. <laughs> um, you know, the, I, I don't know that we can positively say absolutely for sure that Farnsworth's charge happened where it's where the monuments are. And there was a lot of controversy oh. about this about, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Um, but, you know, there's there's a lot of evidence that it could have happened near there. And there's a lot of evidence that maybe it didn't. Mm. So we'll, we'll just kind of leave that at that. But mm. Yeah, that's another episode. Uh, that Yeah. That, I'd like to get into that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that, that might be a field study. Yeah. But, uh, oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. Okay. So, so um, yeah, so go ahead. So that's on the return trip. Yeah. Because he does say that he made it up to the top of, of Little Round Top or the, the rocky area, I think, uh-huh. is, is one in one letter how he describes it. Um, and then he says that he came back down uh, around Big Round Top. Um, you know, and I don't think he says that specifically, but he's heading south. And then he goes around um, and comes out where there was later on a cavalry charge. Okay. Okay. Um, and there was Confederate cavalry that was involved with Merritt. Yeah. So is that the one he's talking about or is he talking about Farnsworth? Okay. So we don't know for yeah. sure. So multiple choice there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then he says he got back as soon as he possibly could and he's reporting to Lee. Now he puts his time at getting back at seven o'clock. Okay. Which means he has somewhere around two and a half hours. I can't do the math on Eric's time stamp. So that's what, well, two hours and 19 minutes and 30 22 seconds? 22 minutes? Or, oh yeah, 19 minutes. <laughs> I think I got it right. It's, I don't know. Um, so I you forgot know, what Eric's time was. Roughly a... <laughs> roughly 438, uh, 29. Yeah, roughly a two and a half hour round trip. Yeah, okay. And, and then he has to find Lee. Okay, and, uh. and he ends up finding Lee, Hill, and Longstreet, two Confederate generals, Hill and Longstreet, with General Lee sitting on a log discussing things. Mm-hmm. Lee has a map on his on his lap. Lee sees him and calls him over. And he asks him to, you know, trace his route, which he does. And Lee's question, and here is the question. This is the mm-hmm. question for the whole thing, Matt. I hope you're ready. I'm ready. You're sitting down. I'm you're ready. ready. I'm sitting down. Yep. Eric, you can see you, that. You good? You ready? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Here goes. Did you get there? There we and go. He that said was, yes. And he said yes. But where? Where is, is there? there? Yeah. Is there a little round top? To be fair to him, he did get to a place. He did get there. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he yeah. did. And wherever I, that was, it was right. there. I really feel like we should add some Dr. Seuss in here, right? Did uh, you absolutely. get there? <laughs> yeah. Did where? you see a hair? Did you see a hair when you yeah. got there? Yeah. Where? Yeah. There. So, you know, he, wherever there is. Yeah. It satisfied General Lee um, that his plan could now be enacted because he immediately says to Longstreet, I think you better get moving. Right. Okay. So this is around 730 ish. Yep. Okay. However, yep. and this, this is another episode, yep. but Longstreet doesn't receive his orders, I thought, until about 11 o'clock in the morning. That sounds like another episode. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, here's what we know happens. Okay, go. Okay. Yeah. Um, so Longstreet leaves. Uh huh. Um, I assume Hill leaves. Yeah. And it's just Lee and Johnston sitting on the log reviewing the map, okay. the topography, and the you know the the routes of access. Okay. So they're they're looking at it a little bit heavier now, and we do know that Lee will ride over and have a conversation with Ewell mm-hmm. sometime around nine o'clock. Okay. And he and 
Johnston is given orders before Lee leaves for that meeting with Ewell, and he tells Johnston to go join uh, Longstreet. Okay. Okay. Somewhere along in this time frame, you have McClaws showing up. Uh-huh. And uh, I think there's some some writings that this is also at the seminary. And McClaws asks Longstreet, can, can Johnston ride with me so I can have a look at the ground? You know, have a look at the route. And Longstreet says no. Huh. Okay. Uh-huh. So why is that? Uh-huh. I don't know either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like another episode. Thought you had an answer. Okay. Yeah. You know, I love doing these episodes where we don't have any answers. <laughs> so, yeah, we're just telling you all the questions that are out there That's right. and what offering did, no answers. Yeah. What did you learn from the podcast Chris was on? Absolutely nothing. nothing. <laughs> learn more from Tom Berenger. It's yeah. like interviewing a hostile witness. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's being answered with a question. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, I've been called a hostile witness at least a couple days. So. <laughs> Did you get there? Did you? Huh? Yeah, that's like yeah. that's what it's like. Okay, yeah. so uh, I always think of President Clinton. That, by the way, yeah, you know when they say, "Did you get there?" You know, well, it depends, depends on what the definition, definition, definition of the word there, there is. is. Yeah, <laughs> can't you just see it? Yeah, can't you just see him sitting there? Yeah, I mean, there are Maybe we talking like philosophically, or <laughs> like, what do you mean there? Uh, Sui, yeah, <laughs> did I get there? I don't know. I don't know. I need to get back to work for the Confederate people. <laughs> uh, so, okay. So he's... Now we've tied Bishop Curry, <laughs> Bill Clinton, into the battle again. Yeah. Okay. Who's yeah. next? And I wasn't implying that Clinton would have fought for the Confederates. It was just because we're talking about uh, the Confederate Army there. He was okay. from Arkansas. Though. Well, that's true. He was yeah. a Southerner. Yeah. Um, and, okay. So, <clears throat> or he still is a Southerner, I guess. I guess. Um, a Southerner. Even though he lives in New York, yeah. So they're they're talking, Johnston and, and Lee, and then you know Johnston goes over to McClaws and everything like that. So Lee gets back and blah, 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 blah. Now, let's go backwards a little bit, though. Okay. We talked about Buford on the Emmitsburg Road. Now, I hear a lot of people say he didn't get to Little Round Top. He couldn't have gotten to Little Round Top because Geary's men were there. There was a signal station there. But... You know, the devil's always in the details, right? When you look into this a little closer, you find out that there was actually a window of opportunity where no one to speak of was there. Yeah. Go into that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so uh, Geary is ordered back to uh, the right of the line. Geary, 12th Corps Division, 12th Corps Commander. Division Commander. He's, he's, they, they, because the 12th Corps arrives, what, uh, night of July 1st? or yep. Yeah. So they arrive July, and, and, and they're told to take a position that, you know, we, we call it the line on the spine. Uh-huh. Um, you know, it's going to end up at the base of Little Round Top. Right. Okay. So Just Geary's division, because Williams right. is where? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't on your Culp's Hill tour. The <laughs> he's there, too. Yeah. He, he's So the whole Wherever core. Wherever there is, Williams oh, yeah. is there. Yeah, yeah, Williams sorry. is there. <laughs> sorry. Williams uh, is there. I'm not there. They were all there. Because I don't know what the definition of there is. But Williams is yeah. there. Yeah, Williams... Um, you know, and I'll, I'll probably get slapped in the back of the head by Charlie Fennell, but, uh, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, I'd have to look at my Leno map, but I believe Williams uh, was was over in Culp's Hill. Yeah, I think that's... Yeah, I think it's Geary that goes over to um, to the left of the line to continue to extend it down while they wait for other troops to come up. Okay. Okay, specifically get the third Corps in position, get the second Corps on up. Second Corps is about on up. You know, they're on the way. Yeah. So they're there. He, he, Geary's is there to... Hold that ground in case they're not expecting anything, really, probably, but you just never know and yeah. you want to hold that ground. Yeah, okay. So he's just like in a holding pattern type of a thing or yeah. a holding. Yeah. Well, yeah. All right. So, but now, okay. So continue yeah. with this. Explain to All people. Right, so, um, so once the third core is, is in place, you know, they've bivouacked for most of the night. Now they can pull Geary back to the right side of the line. And Geary gets orders to go back to the right side of the Union line right. and is, is on the way about 5 a.m. Okay, he's on the way about 5 a.m. Eric, what time did you say, uh, what's his face left? I don't remember. 4.38 and 29 seconds. <laughs> I think that was it. So let's say that he even left at 4.30, like, like Johnston said. Half hour, are you going to get there? To that, down to that, down to little round top with half hour with with Buford's cavalry in the way. You're going on horseback. You got to be careful. Blah blah blah. 
Are you going to get there by 5 o'clock? No, you're not. Well, you're not going to get there by 5, certainly. That's what I'm saying. And, and so now, Geary's not gone by 5, but they start leaving at 5. Right. But they're already kind of on the road. Like, they're not in a... They're not like dug in or anything like that. They're and they're not on the top of Little Round Top. And they're than not on the top some, of Little some Round. Signalman, right? Yeah. There's um, was that the Fifth Ohio's marker on the the yes. slope, the northern slope mm-hmm. of uh, Little Round Top, Correct. and that's indicating their position on July first into second, right? Yes. Um, yeah, I think you have the 147th. I think there's 147th, 147th PA. Yeah, yeah. Marker, somewhere around there too. Yeah. Now. Uh, that for those of you who are wondering what that, which one that is, is as you're coming down Little Round Top to the stop sign to your left, there's going to be a little star sitting there. That's the Fifth Ohio. Yep. They have another one over on Culp's Hill like yep. that, right? The star okay. is no, the core badge. That's 147th PA. Oh, that's 147th. Yeah. Fifth Ohio is which? What does that one look like? I don't remember. Okay. I just know that the 147th PA is right is, there at the intersection. And it's the star. And it's that little star yeah. on the okay. left. Because that's the other one over there. Um. So, yeah, you're right, because the one on Culp's Hill is the star. So uh, that's the area that we're talking about, and that's the extent of how far up the hill they went, essentially, right? Yeah, they're not Roughly. Exact. I mean, it's not exact, but it's yeah. close enough. Okay. So for them, my point I'm, that I was trying to make was that for them to get moving from that area, it wouldn't be as hard as if they were like entrenched and they were like on a battle line, because they're kind of sort of on line. They're not... Really, they're along right. the Tawny Town Road. It's easy for them to, and they can use the interior lines to get yeah. back to to Culp's Hill. So they can they can get moving a little quicker and get out of there. But still, it's like two what two thousand men or something like a couple thousand yeah. men. Yeah. So I mean, it's still going to take a little bit of time. But yep. the, Johnston's not even near Little Round Top anyway. Correct. So what would we say? Maybe half hour, forty five minutes before they're fully out of there, or an hour maybe. Yeah, no, whatever. We'll give him an hour. Okay, we'll give let's say an hour. So out of there an hour. He could get up on Little Round Top if he gets there. Mm-hmm. And because they're on the northern slope and he would be approaching from the southern slope, he doesn't need to go all the way up to the northern slope. Correct. So he could absolutely, totally like miss them. Yes. He could literally be there the same time that the tail end of that column is there if if that part of the column is the last to go. Assume, I mean, do we know which part left first? Don't we, we don't know. know. So yeah. we don't know. Um, he could get up there and not see Gary's men at all. Yeah. Now, the second thing is the signal corps okay. or the signal station. So explain how that worked and what the mix up is with that. So, if, if I understand correctly, the signal corps um, was tied to the, the 12th corps. Uh-huh. So they're going to travel with them until. Um, you know, the, the overall signal core comes in and, and gets set up. So, so there's, there's a little... There's a space of like three hours. I, I think the Norton, Lemuel Norton writes um, something like they're they're up there about 11 a.m., I think. Yes, yes. Um, you know, so so the time from when the 12th Corps leaves, you know, it could it could be said there, there probably wasn't... No, no, I, mean, I think it was 9 a.m. 9 a.m.? I think yeah. so. I'd have to go back and look at the notes. And, yeah, because uh, I, I just read it in that article. I think yeah. it's nine. Well, let's yeah. say nine to yeah. eleven. So even if it's nine, <laughs> somewhere around there. Yeah, even, even if, if it's, it's nine, nine, Johnston's back at oh, yeah. seven. Yeah. So okay, so with the, with, with the signal corps, it's this small little group of guys, mm-hmm. and did they uh, at that point in the history of the Army of the Potomac was the signal corps kind of the way the cavalry used to be, where it would be split up and assigned a different core um, and not like under a central. My understanding is that there was some of that. I, I don't know that. I some of what? That. Some some of it being split up amongst different corps. But not. Know, not OK. Got um, it. <clears throat> you know, but I don't know for sure, Matt. OK. Um, so you know, I do know that that from the time they cross the Potomac River, um, you know, starting on June 25th to, to June 29th, they are going to each piece of high ground uh, all the way through Maryland, setting up signal stations. Yeah. Kind of leapfrogging. Right. You know, so... And as the Army's moving underneath them, they're communicating they're with communicating. each other. Yeah. yeah. So there's, there's a very conscientious effort to be able to keep... The, the lines of communication open if sure. you sure yeah um, you know by by flag signaling okay yeah. so 
the the Signal Corps argument then, um, if if we're to believe Johnston's timing and all that stuff, uh, and with Geary, it is very possible that he could have gotten up there without encountering a Union soldier. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, there's a patrol, I think it's Company E of the 9th New York, that's going up and down the Emmitsburg Road. Mm-hmm. And I, I can't remember, Is it? does he encounter them when he's on his way back or on when his way? he's on his way back. So on his way yeah. back. Yeah. And it's, uh, uh, in my head, what I was reading it, I'm imagining it's somewhere around where South Confederate or Confederate Avenue crosses the Emmitsburg Road. Is that right? Well, um, what do we not again, know? you get multiple choice. Okay. Okay. So, and this kind of plays into, did he get to Little Round Top? Okay. So think about this. You know, we, we know Buford is patrolling the Emmitsburg Road. Right. Okay. He's, he's got, you know, the, the ninth New York doing that patrolling. Um, and, and when they do patrolling, they, they set up, um, you know, uh, they establish, um, patrol headquarters, if you will, uh-huh. for, for lack of a better phrase. There's probably a military phrase that I'm not familiar with. But that is that is like the, the center of the universe for these patrols. Yes. So they, they go out, they patrol, they come back, and they report, and then that patrol headquarters reports on up. Mm-hmm. So the boss is constantly getting reports as far as what they're seeing and what's happening. Right, okay. okay? I believe the Snyder Farm was probably one of those. Oh. So I have... Um, skepticism that Samuel Johnston rode right by the Snyder house, either on a, a well cleared path that ends up through the Slider Farm, uh-huh. or even you know south of that. Except south of that, there's a skirt of woods that he might have been able to use, sure, and avoid uh, other uh, patrols, other Union patrols. So, and there's fog. There's fog. Okay, but. I mean, I how do you know, keep your I mean, horse quiet? You know, that's that's another thing that intrigues well, me. And that was that was what I was wondering. Like, is there a point where maybe he hold, gives the horse to the other guys and says, you know, hide back here. I'm going to go up on foot. There's not that he ever wrote about. Okay, it could be, it could be. I mean, you know, uh, being a multiple choice guy like I am, <laughs> you know, once Johnston gets across the Emmitsburg Road, yeah, I think you know whether it's through the slider and Bushman lanes. Um, whether it's through um, Ridge Road, uh-huh. which is just south yeah. of there, um, he has access into uh, Bushman Hill, mm-hmm. which is a prominent hill. I think a lot of people think that's where he got to. Yes, I've heard that because you can see pretty good from there. Yeah, um, I think he has access to certainly Big Round Top, Little Round Top. Um, I think if you you know, if you read through some of these articles and they say that, that he was able to see the second core, I think uh, Alan Thompson refers to that in his article. Where is the second core at this point? Second core would be coming up uh, the Tinytown Road. Okay, um, so he could see them. Well, I think there's some reference that, that Alan Thompson says they, they, they could. Okay. I, I don't know that he ever wrote about that. So, do we, you know. Okay, we'll, gotcha. We'll kind of kind of leave that there. Right. Let's um, not confuse ourselves even I, more. I think, and I should say this, I think the best article written on Johnston's reconnaissance okay. is uh, the one written by Alan Thompson. Okay. Okay. Um, so, you know, Alan's, Alan's article in Gettysburg Magazine, um, uh, 61, I think. Um, it's a recent, recent article in the past couple of years. So uh, let me see if I can yeah. find it here. Keep going. No. Okay. So, so you got multiple choice, right? Little round top, big round top, Bushman Hill. Uh, you've got Warfield Ridge. You know, if he got on Warfield Ridge, you can see pretty far into, you know, uh, up the Emmitsburg Road. You can see pretty far up to the Peach Orchard. You can see pretty far into Devil's Den in that area. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, did you get there? That's a pretty good launching point. As yeah. It turns out later. Sure. Okay. So uh, maybe that's where there is, you know. There's no telling. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, without him pointing specifically to a map and saying, there's a little round top and that's where I got to, all of this is, is pure speculation. Right. It is uh, Gettysburg Magazine, number 61. 61. Good call. Good and it's, call. And it's Alan Thompson, right? Alan Thompson. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, Great article. And a uh, good map, I think, as you're trying to figure out. Uh, yes. It, it, the map is pretty good. Yeah. So now he has to return. 
right? He's he's gotten to wherever he's gotten. He's gathered in the information that he needs, and now right. he has to return. And he does talk about going a little bit farther south. Johnson mentions going a little bit farther south. And as he's getting ready to cross the Emmitsburg Road, he sees the cavalry patrols going up and down the Emmitsburg Road. And he's got to deal with that. So mm. uh, he and his party, um, you know, they kind of hold back for a little bit until the coast is clear. But he doesn't want to wait too long because he thinks that there could be more Union troops coming up. He's absolutely right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Who is coming? The, uh, the rest of the Third Corps. Yeah. Yeah. So the Third Corps, you mentioned them because I just asked you a question and that was the answer. Um, wh- would they come up? Where do they go eventually? So when, when they come up the, the Emmitsburg. Emmitsburg Road, they're going to start going into position um, you know, to, to replace Geary's line right. at first. And then uh, uh, they got a, a general, I, I can't remember his name. Uh, Pickles or something <laughs> like that. That's, uh, that's going to... Oh, no, he got them into a pickle. He got them into a pickle. Yes. Yeah, Sickles, that's it. Sickles that's how I remember his pickle. name. Sickles got yeah. them into a pickle. Yeah, he's going to he's gonna deploy them differently. Uh, yeah. I'll just say that. <laughs> yeah, um, which but, is also another show. Yeah. So they're gathering They're gathering in, though. They're, they're getting to the battlefield. Yeah. So right now, the Union Army owns the Emmitsburg Road. Right. Later on, they won't. Right. But right now, they do. Good point. Okay, so... He gets back and and all that all by seven o'clock. Yep. So you know, um, there's there's if we were out in the field physically, I'd, I'd take you and show you the the routes that I I think that he took both to get there and to get back. Mm-hmm. Um, but we still don't know where there is. No. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a tour to nowhere, I guess. And yeah, and and he's and when he says so, the reason before when I brought up that he says that he got to the slope of Round Top. Um. And I asked you to go into you know what they're talking about when they say round top is is that uh, we don't really know which slope that is. Oh. That's the point. No. Um, is it big, little? Even I've I've read. I think it was in the Thompson article that uh, said it could have been even Devil's Den. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't really know. Um, that's the point. And he, if his timeline is correct. And he says there's no troops there. He could be right. Absolutely. According to the timeline that the Union Army has established for itself. Yeah. Does he mention anything about Buford? I mean, is Buford just kind of a non-issue because who wouldn't have cavalry out there? Like Lee would expect that. The only mention he makes at cavalry is the return trip. Is is the the little company. And Pendleton only mentions in the capture of the two soldiers. Uh, from whatever reconnaissance he made. Okay. And, okay. But those were captured on the Fairfield Road or Millerstown Road? Yeah. Millerstown Road. <laughs> we don't know. Um, it could have been Millerstown Road. It could have been the um, Black Horse Tavern Road. We, we don't know for sure because I don't know that that in a similar nature, I don't know that, that Pendleton actually wrote exactly where his his reconnaissance went, right. which he believed was on the morning of the 2nd. Okay. And he believed that Johnston and Clark rode with, with him, him for a while and then separated. Uh-huh. Okay. So they could have been on Clark, two separate Clark's reconnaissance. Clark's dead later on. Yeah, so we don't and know. And Johnson doesn't remember riding with Pendleton. So right. You know, take that from what you will. Um, maybe maybe he went out riding and Pendleton followed him quietly and he had no idea. He said, uh, I'm part of this. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So I can he goes, this is later. going to be a momentous uh, reconnaissance, so I'm just going to get to yeah. be part of a little bit yeah. of it. And I'm going to sell my speeches. <laughs> Make a lot of money. Whoa. So <laughs> now the the cavalry stuff with Buford's guys, the, the guys that are captured by Pendleton, those guys are on a reconnaissance, like pushing out west almost to, towards Fairfield, like they're trying to just see what's coming. I'm guessing they're on patrol. Oh, they're on patrol. Okay. And and as is the 9th New York guys on the Emmitsburg Road, they're on patrol as well. Right. So you would have more than one patrol out. Absolutely. You would patrol the different roads and everything. And yeah. they're just going back and forth, right? Yep. Yeah. So they, they, they go out. They, you know, they, they continuously, you know, cab screening is, is very specific in, um, you know, in, in the, the manual as far right. as how it's done. Um, you know, it's, it's, um, uh, kind of like in a fan, you know, where you have 
a cluster of of cavalry men. Then you have your vedettes, like mm-hmm. we think about on the mm-hmm. first day, mm-hmm. and then beyond that, you have even more spread out. Mm. And they all you know ride back and forth and report to each other. Right. So there's constant communication coming in, as well as protection. That it, you know, as the early warning systems. Think of July first. Sure. Early warning system. You see the Confederates. You fire a little bit. You know, you you get them to to stand back on their heels a little bit, and then you can do what you need to do. Right. Sort of the same thing. Right. You know, they're not really expecting it, but they certainly don't want Confederates to come out of Fairfield, uh, where Buford had been a couple, you know, a uh, matter of hours had, before. Yeah, he had encountered uh, them yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, was it uh, the 29th? I, I don't think. remember. Uh, I'd, I'd have to refer to my Phil Lano map book again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which I didn't bring with me. Um, and I got to get a copy. Mine fell you, apart. You do because yeah, uh, it, it would every, be good to have here, yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah, every library needs one. And I know. Sold in fine bookstores. I know. You just can't even find a used one that's cheap. They're challenged to find. Jeez, one. Yeah. I know. Yeah, you got to know a guy, Matt. Is what you got to do. I know. You gotta know I know. Apparently, I don't know the right guy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so you have that cavalry screening going on, right? Okay, and that that gets affected because of uh, the capture, right? Um, you know, Pendleton talks mm-hmm. about uh, capturing the two guys. Mm. Um, you know, the the couple of Buford's guys capture a Negro servant from the Confederates, and uh, they interrogate him, and and he's sharing what he knows about their positions. Uh-huh. So you know, there's this transfer of information, you know, to some degree on both sides. Uh, um, you know, as as far as what's going on, just in the intelligence gathering. So you mean like between the phases of the battle? Um, it's not like in the movie where everybody's just laying around, just <laughs> sitting there sweating in yeah, the heat, yeah. fully I, buttoned up. I, like there's I, actually I information. Philosophical com- discussion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Tell me, there must be a story in antiquity about two idiots that, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> they got captured by yeah, they got, they got Confederate captured. <laughs> artillery uh, officer. Yeah, they got captured while going for a joyride. Yeah. yeah. So, um, okay. So he gets back. Yes. Sam Johnson gets back. And, uh, um, you know, then, you know, he has the, the meeting and, you know, he is assigned by Lee to accompany Longstreet. And uh, McClaws asks for, you know, hey, can I have a little bit of Sam Johnson time? And Longstreet says no. <laughs> right. Um, so now, and why? Because long, because McClaws is at the head of the column, and he wants to know where I, to go. I think he kind of wants to understand, you know, the nature of the ground, right? Which, you know, hindsight being what it is, probably would have been a good idea. Sure. Um, so he couldn't send like a staff officer to go find Johnston and and ask him some questions. Um, you know, maybe, but yeah, but he didn't. But you know, I I think um, you know, there's there's evidence that McClaws was at Lee's headquarters. You know, in the seminary, that that group of people, right? Um, you know, that include guys like Hood and, and McClaws and Longstreet and Hill and. It's interesting because you know, in the movie, <laughs> I don't think McClaws I, is in. I, I don't even know McClaws is in the movie uh, in that one scene where they're all looking at the map. Is and, he? And maybe this is what we're talking about. Maybe that's the scene in the movie. But I didn't. I didn't remember seeing Sam Johnston in that. Movie. <laughs> no, no, there was yeah, no. But who played him in the movie? Wait, who played McClaws? Uh, he's uh, or not who played him, but like which guy was McClaws? Is it the guy with the scraggly gray beard who doesn't look anything <laughs> like Mc? Oh, well, that, that doesn't narrow it down. <laughs> what? He's standing next to Hood. Uh, Is it I, the guy standing next to Hood who, I'd have who to watch that doesn't look movie. anything like look McClaws? for the name tag? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Well, whatever. It's not important. Um, but okay. So the so Longstreet's whole day is uh planned around the information that comes back from Johnston's ride. Yeah. And uh but so much happens between when he yeah. got that inf- like that it th- and that's kind of what I don't understand is is uh Lee at some point didn't think that this could be outdated by now or you know. Well, you know, I think my understanding of of Lee's generalship and, and, you know, it's a constant study, yes. of course, um, is I, I think he says to Fremantle, you know, my job is to kind of lay out the plan. Right. And then I leave it to my generals to figure out how it's going to happen. We know Lee is being very specific with McClaws and Longstreet mm-hmm. as to how they 
have to place the troops. Right. Right? Yes. Longstreet wants to place them one way. Lee says, no, sir. No, no. I would appreciate them being placed this way. Right. Okay, so we know that that conversation's going on. So, you know, commander's intent at that point should be understood. Uh-huh. Okay. We can argue over a beer whether or not it was understood um, by Longstreet, but at, from that point forward, I think it's Lee's style to then let let Longstreet handle it. Longstreet yeah. understands my intent. He understands the order. He's got the latest reports that I've got. You know, go make it happen. Mm-hmm. And one of the other indicators to that, to me, is the fact that when it needs to change, Longstreet changes it. Right? He ends up extending the line down when they discover the troops in the peach orchard. Right. So, you know, I, I think, you know, Lee, you know, from Lee's perspective, hey— I, I gave you the plan. I think there's more evidence of that on the third day when he's riding in front of Pender's troops, you know, and he makes a comment. I miss in this brigade the faces of, of uh, many old friends. I think he's actually in front of Scales Brigade. Uh-huh. Uh, I miss in, in this brigade the faces of many old friends. Well, if you miss those faces and you're looking at the amount of people – and you're not saying, wait a second, let's have a priority interrupt here. You, know, right. you have enough guys over here? Yeah, you know? right. I mean, yeah. I think we would do that, right? I, most people, I think, would. Yeah. I mean, yeah, wasn't there also a, 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 I don't know if it was the same person he said that's to or not, but I think it was also going down uh, the same group of troops um, where he says something like, uh, he's looking at all the walking wounded, mm-hmm. and he says something like, well, these men shouldn't be. Yeah. Yeah, out it's, here it's and the same conversation the same conversation yeah. yeah the attack must succeed yeah yeah he he uh yeah it's it's weird like he just doesn't seem to know what's been going on yeah. in his own army for the last well, three. And, like and nobody's telling him the condition of the troops well it is well yeah i mean we don't know right yeah <laughs> but is that really his job you to know? know the condition of his army well i mean he has to know the condition of his army yeah but once he's put a plan forth that says okay you know Jimmy Longstreet, yeah, you know AP Hill. No, yeah, no. I mean, the, you know, it's uh, here's my plan. Yeah, they should be able to carry they're, out. They're the ones that are supposed yeah, to carry. They got to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. So, no, yeah. That's, so the hard part to understand is why didn't he say, you know, time out on the field here, guys? You know, we're, yeah. Let's like reassess yeah. and either you don't understand what I'm asking, or I didn't, I wasn't aware that that we didn't have what it right what it took. I mean, in the end, he does kind of get it right though. He says it's all his fault. Yeah. Because it is all yeah. his fault. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, that's an accountability thing. Right? Yeah. That's good leadership. But, okay, so is there anything more you want to add about the reconnaissance, another mystery, or anything else we want to get into before we take our break and then go to the questions? Um, no, I think we're good for right now. Okay. Uh, so we'll take a break. We'll did, come did back. we solve anything? We solved, no. We're we solved more nothing. confused. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we know less than when we started, and we're way more confused than we've ever been. Uh, then my job is done here. <laughs> but ho- hopefully, <laughs> hopefully some of the uh, questions that the listeners have sent in will maybe uh, spark an answer that will shed some light, <laughs> although I highly doubt it, but we'll see. Okay. And it's not because the questions are bad, but it's because there's a lot we just don't know. Yep. So we'll see. We'll take a break. We'll come right back. I'll tell you what, this might come in handy if the lockdowns continue throughout the winter. Plowman Cider is a proud sponsor of Address in Gettysburg and wants to offer our listeners the chance to bring Adams County's delicious agricultural countryside to the comfort of your own home this winter. Grown and fermented on Plowman's seventh generation family farm, their heirloom and bittersweet apple varieties create ciders that would have been familiar to our ancestors, but will be new to your modern taste buds. You can get Plowman Cider on Gettysburg's historic Lincoln Square at their tap room or have it shipped to your home by visiting plowmancider.com. Addressing Gettysburg listeners can use the coupon code CIDERPOD at checkout to enjoy 15% off your order. So put a taste of Adams County in your glass this winter with Plowman Cider. Go to plowmancider.com and use promo code CIDERPOD for 15% off. That's P-L-O-U-G-H-M-A-N-C-I-D-E-R.com. You must be 21 years of age and shipping is subject to your state's regulations. Think outside the bus and let Getty's Bike Tours show you the only way to truly experience Gettysburg. There's a reason why Getty's Bike Tours is the longest running bicycle tour company in Gettysburg, and that's because they put the customer's experience and safety at the top of their list of priorities. 
Follow a licensed battlefield guide through some of the most legendary ground in American history. There's a tour route for everyone, from the newbie to the hardcore history buff. So go to GettysBike.com or call 717-752-7752 and book your reservation today. Mention addressing Gettysburg and receive 10% off your tour. Discount does not apply to rentals. That's GettysBike.com or 717-752-7752. Gettysburg, a nation divided. The battle that changed America. Avatars. Generals. Artifacts. Games. 360 degree views. An immersive battlefield experience. A new way to discover history. Gettysburg, a nation divided in augmented reality. Narrated by Scott Eastwood. Download it from your phone's app store today and support addressing Gettysburg by entering GBurg1863 in the referral code prompt after downloading. The History of North America podcast is a sweeping historical saga of the United States, Canada, and Mexico from their deep origins to our present epoch. Join me, Mark Vinette, on this exciting, fascinating, epic journey through time, focusing on the compelling, wonderful, and tragic stories of North America's inhabitants, heroes, villains, leaders, environment, and geography. This incredible historical adventure follows a path of exciting events led by interesting people who reach beyond their grasp to touch key moments in time. The History of North America podcast series is an educational and entertaining look at the thrilling chronicle of North America, an action-packed tale of a continent that is still unfolding. I invite you to come along for the ride. Hey Gettysburg business owners, 2021 is just around the corner and that means that in a few months people will be planning their spring, summer and fall trips. So why not tell them about your business through addressing Gettysburg? Did you know that younger families look for shorter vacations and they plan their itinerary before they ever set foot in their destination? Did you know that Addressing Gettysburg provides great exposure to several thousand listeners within a four to eight hour drive of Gettysburg each month and tens of thousands more outside of that area? Did you know that by the time someone sees your ad in an expensive print publication after they've arrived, they've already made their plans and it's too late to convert them? Or did you know that our listeners have not only a love of the history of Gettysburg, but also of the place itself and the many awesome businesses we have to patronize. With 57% of Americans listening to podcasts these days, there's really no good reason to not get on board with addressing Gettysburg. So take advantage of our ground floor rates while they last. Contact us at advertise at addressinggettysburg.com. That's advertise at addressinggettysburg.com. You're listening to the Addressing Gettysburg podcast with Matt Callery. All right. Thank you very much there, uh, Samuel. Uh, okay. So we have Samuel Jackson. That, yes, it's Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we, we've got our questions now um, from our patrons. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to uh, submit a question for an Ask a Guide, you got to become a patron. And it also supports the show. It helps us do all the wonderful things that we've been doing for you and uh, do some things that we haven't been doing for you that are in the works. So uh, thank you to all of our patrons and uh, thank you for just considering becoming a patron, even if you don't. Uh, one of our new patrons, Kathleen Roeder, asks her first question, and it goes a little something like this. I'd like to know, since it's obvious that Johnston's recon was at best flawed, oh, is it obvious, if anyone has an opinion on whether uh, he had gotten it, or if he had gotten it, let me start to if anyone has an opinion on whether if he had gotten it right, if he had reported back to Lee in the morning that there was, in fact, a sizable Union force collecting on Cemetery Ridge and therefore that the attack up the Emmitsburg Road was going to meet sizable resistance, if Lee could have changed that order. I, did, did you get that? 
<laughs> I think. Let me say this about that. Okay, go. <laughs> <laughs> Let me I, say it depends on what your definition of the word changed is. It, um, you know, I, I I don't know that the reconnaissance was flawed. I don't um, either. You know, we we have no way of knowing that. Um, we do know what Lee wrote in his OR about his objective, and his objective during this attack was to at least gain the high ground of the peach orchard so that he could then further attack Cemetery Hill. Maybe all at the same time, but the peach orchard was a point of of what Lee wanted, at least from what he stated in his OR. If I may defend Kathleen and anyone else who agrees with, with her in, that, in saying that it's flawed, mm-hmm. we, we know... What happened? We know who ended up being there. Yeah. We know how it all played out hours later. But now we know one of the things that we do know, in fact, out of this episode, I think. (laughs) Is there something we know? (laughs) Yes. Is that we've established that there is that window of opportunity where he could have gotten there and saw no Union troops on Little Round Top. Yes. You have successfully defended her honor. Okay, good. Now. We don't actually know that he got to Little Round Top. No. But he could have. If if he was able to get there, if he did, then he wouldn't be lying. And I don't think anybody thinks that he was lying, right? No. Okay. They're just saying that he was mistaken. At, uh, charitably, I'm saying that. That he was mistaken, right? They're being... Or are they saying... Well, are they attaching nefarious... It's- it's. It depends on what your your use of his <laughs> oh, answers are. Okay, I you thought know. you were going to say like use of the word. No. Okay, yeah, because no. then you we're know, getting if, all lawyerly. If you're going to use his answers to prove that Longstreet was supposed to attack at sunrise, <laughs> uh huh, <laughs> that's a different use of the information than if you're just really like we're trying to do, figure out you know where did he get to and how did that help mm-hmm. in Lee's planning. And I think we know how it helped in Lee's planning. Um, and, and I also think if, if he had not done a proper job, if, if he had really messed this up, right. I don't think you would have seen him continue to rise you know, from a captain to a lieutenant colonel. So, in other words, Lee didn't see this as a mess up. Absolutely did not see right. it as a mess up. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. All right. Joey Picard says, even if Lee believed Johnson made it to the right, uh, which which retrospect tells us isn't likely, and that it was reported little round top empty uh, and therefore the Union flank much more north than it actually was. When you add in the waiting and the delays and the countermarch, wouldn't Lee recognize that a morning scouting report was outdated by early afternoon? I kind of asked that before. Wouldn't he order a second scout or at least warn Longstreet's core commander, warn Longstreet that things may have changed? Why wouldn't he have assumed that given all the hours of extra idle time Meade was granted that he wouldn't let's just leave it at that why why wouldn't he have assumed that given all of the hours of extra people you got to use commas <laughs> we need commas in here why wouldn't he have assumed that given all of the hours of extra idle time mead was granted that he would be reinforcing and extending his lines so matt you know when when i first started coming to gettysburg as a little tyke mm-hmm. um and 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 i would Engage the services of licensed battlefield guide Wayne Walksmith. Wayne was a uh, a B fifty two pilot. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Very, um, you know, Air Force by the book. You know, this is how it's done. This is protocol, and so on. Sure. And Wayne had some axioms. You know, the ground drives the battle is one that I always heard sure, him say. I like you know, that. You yeah. hear that one a lot. It's a good one. Um, one of my other favorite ones that he says is the enemy gets a vote. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So in this case, George Meade got a vote. Sure. Okay. Maybe Dan Sickles, it could be said, got a vote uh, in in Lee's planning. And when when you take a look at Longstreet's response, once the countermarch is done and they they get out into, you know, launching this attack and they they come up on top of the ridge and they look out and they see those blue Union uniforms along the Emmitsburg Road – um, that has to change things. 
you know, sure. prior to that, you know, I, I don't know if Lee was, was thinking, yep, Longstreet's getting into position. It's going to happen any moment now. I know it is. I can feel it. It's going to happen. How about now? Is it? I think it's right now. Right. No. How about now? <laughs> did did Longstreet, yeah, so. uh, did he do, you know, as, as time wore on, did he do his own reconnaissance before setting out on the road? Do we know about uh, I, that? I don't don't know that he did. Um, but it would be kind of to your point before, though. It, at that point, it would have been on Longstreet to do it, not Lee to do another one, and not Lee to say, "Hey, this information." I, I think it, you Long, can say that, right? Um, what's interesting is in in one of the letters, um, and and I want to see if I have it here. Go ahead. Um, so this is uh, the eighteen. 18- 78 letter to uh, Fitzhugh Lee. Okay. And, um, you know, the the letter, he writes two to Fitz Lee. And in uh, the first letter, Fitz Lee asked for an opinion of the early attack and why the delay until 4 p.m. So the same question your listener is asking. Mm-hmm. Uh, Johnston is actually surprised, and he writes this back to Fitz Lee. Um, he's surprised of Longstreet's impression of his role uh, in this in this attack in this in this march, so Johnston is surprised mm. at his role in this attack, according to what Longstreet thinks it is. Ah, okay? And okay, he says he did not know that he had Lee's confidence to lead the attack. Uh-huh. Okay, so so Longstreet kind of intimates that that well, you know, Johnston over there, that's Lee's guy. He's supposed to lead us where we're supposed to go. So, okay. Okay. Mm. Now, who knows? I mean, we know that Johnston was ordered to ride with Longstreet, but right. there's no other specific order that he ever wrote about that said, and you're going to be the guy telling Longstreet where to go. Why did he send Long, or, uh, Johnston to go with Longstreet? I think it's an assist kind of thing. Right. Because so, he's been on that road. He's he, been on he's the been, road. Yeah, yeah. Help him out. Yeah. All right. Very interesting. Uh, Lord Charles Critchfield says... In my research on George W. Peterkin, uh, first bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of West Virginia, who at the time of Gettysburg was serving on William Pendleton's staff, I found Peterkin recorded in his diary, quote, started very early and reconnoitered the right on the morning of July uh, 2nd. According to Pendleton, Peterkin accompanied the artillery chief on reconnaissance. Okay, we talked about this, Pendleton. So here's the question. Does Chris Army have insight into this issue? (laughs) Which is that... uh, Johnston does not confirm it, and and we kind of went over that a little bit. But go ahead. Yeah, it's and it's it's interesting that Peterkin is one of the four letters that we have. Yeah, you know that he, that he writes. You know, kind of, hey, what do you remember about this? Mm-hmm. Um, when you know, if he wrote in his diary, hey, we were there. So, you know, could we absolutely have a situation where Pendleton and Peterkin and and a L. Long, he he goes out on a reconnaissance that morning for you know some artillery positions, I think as well. Right. You know, is he with Pendleton? We we don't know. There's there's no list of here's the cast of characters that we're riding out. Hmm. So I would think, and and you know maybe you look at it this way. You know, you have you ever been to a concert, Matt? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, oh sure. You know, maybe like thirty years ago. <laughs> Who was popular thirty years ago? Would that uh, it doesn't matter because or? when I went to concerts, I was going to concerts of people who were popular 30 years prior to when I was going to concerts. I liked old okay. music. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, I was clapped in and yeah. the Almond Brothers uh, and all that stuff. Yeah, okay. good yeah. stuff. Okay, so think about you know uh, uh, an Almond Brothers <coughs> concert you went to 30 years ago. I can't ago. remember that. So give, yeah. me, give me, Clapton yeah. okay. was a little uh, easier going. <laughs> okay, so Clapton. <laughs> think of a concert, insert, yeah. uh, insert sure. artist names here. Okay, Clapton okay. concert, go. Do, do you remember that night as far as the route that you took driving to that concert, where you parked and walking into the concert? No. Kind of remember highlights of the concert, right? I remember highlights of standing uh, across from Madison Square Garden. And someone came over to me and he didn't look, he looked like he was up to no good. And he asked me for a cigarette and I said, oh God, this is how all the, the mugging stories I've heard about start. <laughs> and, and yeah, and I, I peed my pants <laughs> and then uh, I gave him the cigarette and he was a complete gentleman. <laughs> and he said, thank you. Can I give you a quarter? And I said, oh no, 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 that's fine. And, and, uh, and then, yeah, I remember the feeling, uh, I remember highlights of the concert. Yes. But I don't remember how I got there. Exactly. I think it was a bus. I don't 
know for sure. Yeah. So we don't know the date on this letter uh, that Peterkin wrote. That's unfortunate. We do know that it was written after 1878 because mm-hmm. Johnston refers to Peterkin as my dear bishop. Okay. Okay. So, um, so we're able And he to, became a bishop in 1878? Right. Okay. Right. I gotcha. think it's 77, if I'm not mistaken. But, but right along that, he was a bishop at that time. Right. Okay. And it's before 1892 because that's when McClaws is writing okay. the letter. So that's number four, letter number four. Okay. Okay. So, um, you know, so it, it's strange to me that if Peterson's writing in his diary, hey, I went on a reconnaissance and it included Peterkin. Peterkin. Yeah. Yeah. You said Peterson. Oh, sorry. Peterkin. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Peterkin. Um, you know, that, that it included Captain Johnston. Uh huh. Um, and, you know, Pendleton writes about that, but Johnston doesn't remember that. That's a little bit strange unless the answer there is that Johnston and Clark and their two guys, they had their orders. Right. You know, for their reconnaissance, and, and it's all kind of happening at the same time. Right. But they still have to go on. Yeah. And, you know, uh, Pendleton continues to do his reconnaissance for the artillery. It, uh, who knows? It, yeah. It, and it is, you know, I, I can think of things where, um, you know, like I know uh, an event occurred. Mm-hmm. And I know people were there. And I know who they are, but it's not until I see a video or, um, I, I, I remember I, before, you know, everybody had video cameras all over the place and phones and stuff like that. I remember I, uh, my, my friend and I went out to uh, Wyoming to do like one of those like horseback adventure things. Right. And there were no phones. There was, it was in the middle of nowhere, no electricity. The electricity was generated by propane. Uh, you know, it was awesome. Uh, I kept a, a journal of the trip because, you know, I never do anything like that. I haven't done it before. I haven't done it since. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to remember it. And I found that journal not too long ago and I was reading through it and I had no memory of any of the stuff that I was talking about. <laughs> any of it yeah. and we weren't drinking yeah. it was yeah. like you know the air's too thin to be doing all that crazy stuff like we were just there we would get up with the sun we would go to sleep with the sun and we would ride horses all day and that was it mm-hmm. and but there were little anecdotes and little conversations that i recount in there that i have no memory of to this day even after reading it i have and i'm like who wrote this like, so who? Would, you, would you say that's just another day at the office <clears throat> another day well um, Not, you know i mean you know, being, it, you know wyoming you yeah it was a another adventure in my friendship with my friend right okay we, we would always go on these goofy little things that you know crazy idea and we yeah let's do that you know so it was another thing yeah. but while we were there after we got over the thrill of you know being out in the wild west with horses mm-hmm. you know after maybe the first two hours and we realized <laughs> man there's no running water here <laughs> you know it was it's like okay this is going to be rough in it then it became our normal dynamic in our friendship. We just happened to have changed scenery. Mm-hmm. So I would imagine it's the same thing with an army. You fight battle after battle, and it's more about the people, uh, the, well, like the, just the normalcy of that. Like whatever normal routines you can get in in an army situation, that's what you focus on. And you go out and you do your job, but you don't remember every detail. Because you don't know well, that people are going to be squabbling about it 150 years later. Yeah. Or even 30 years later. Or, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and think about it. Johnston shows up. Let's say he shows up on July 1st. We'll give him that. Okay. Okay. Let's say he leaves July 4th. You know, okay. It's part of the, uh, you know, the, the retrograde movement. Mm-hmm. Okay. So he's here for three three days. Right. Um, never came here again, as far as we know. Right. Okay. Um, you know, there's there's places that I've been for a week. And I have memories of those places, but if you had to, you know, have me tell you what streets I went down or, you know, what route I took, you right. know, 20 or 30, even 10 years ago, yeah, I probably couldn't do it. No. And it's another day at the office. He's not going to write specifically, you know, because the question is, you know, can we get troops in the position, you know, that this map shows where we need them mm-hmm. to go get the peach orchard? Yeah. So. Good points. Good points. Uh, Matthew Quigg asks, I have been a patron for quite a while now, but have not had the time to get any questions to you. 
Being at home on quarantine, I finally get a chance to ask. Okay, great, Matthew. Ask the question. Here it is. I had, see, I had seen reports that Captain Johnston and his men were dressed as civilians during this ride. Is there any truth to this? Thank you for the wonderful podcast. You're welcome, Matthew. Thank you for your wonderful listening and your patronage. Uh, so go ahead. Uh, what is the answer to that question? Maybe. Civilian clothing. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, it's... Where does it, this come from? Uh, I don't know that I've seen any references where they, they said that. I know I've, I've heard people say that on different tours and different, oh. you know, uh, different things. And, okay. and it would make sense, yeah. you know, because you're you are you're scouting, right? You know, um, you're you're trying to find your way through this territory, and you know you can always say, "Hey, we're we're local farmers," and sure, you know, or uh, be hanged as spies, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially <laughs> you know you run into Buford, and uh, that's that, that yeah, could yeah. End, not ended well, right? And, right? He's so, kind of fond of that. Yeah. So, uh, so we don't know. He didn't he didn't write. You know, I put on my fresh new uniform and. Mm-hmm. We yeah. just don't know. Okay. Uh, Charles Fuller, did Lee have any cavalry at all available on July 1st or July 2nd that that he could have used for scouting purposes? Obviously, Stewart's cavalry was late, but surely Lee must have had at least a squadron of cavalry available to him in the first few days of the battle to do scouting. Just wondering why he chose Captain Johnston in place of a cavalry squadron for the task. Well, I think the answer is because of the, <clears throat> the fact that you want to have a small group, you know, like we've, we've mm-hmm. already talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there, there wasn't a lot of cavalry available. You know, you've got George Pickett, uh, and his division guarding trains and chambers, right? Because there's no cavalry, not enough cavalry yeah. to do that. So and I, I would say, you know, it's, it's Lee's preference to have the small group go figure it out. Yeah. And, and wouldn't it, uh, wouldn't Lee kind of be, I mean, would he prefer his topographical engineer do this anyway? I would say so. Yeah. Somebody yeah. knows and yeah. trusts and everything. Not that his cavalry is yeah. incompetent, but he didn't no, have but, it anyway. You, know, you want to know the roads. You want to know the waterways. You want right. to know the railroads. You want to know the bridges. You want to know yeah. access. You want to know the topography. That's, okay. that's their job. Uh, Kevin Randolph, did Johnston have any prior experience with such tasks? Absolutely. Yes, of yep. course. Yep. And, uh, you know, we, we talked a little bit about his career, um, you know, as, as he went through um, – you know, as as a topographical engineer, and and I would say he had a stellar career as a topographical engineer. Yeah, and uh, E Money uh, ends it here, and he wants to know: Does it matter? <laughs> e well, Money, does it matter? <laughs> does it matter? Well, would you like to join us on the answer to this one, Ke- uh, ever Eric? Whatever your name is, Kevin? yeah, no, it's a Kevin. fine name, E Money. That is. <laughs> Uh, e money. This is Eric's question. He had this during it the break. Is. And it, let me hey, let me elaborate a little. Please bit do because you're that. insulting uh, our guest. At least he's not saying. Does, who cares? Yeah. Does it yeah. matter as much as people want to make it out? I know it matters because it does go into you know a, the decision making process for Lee's plans on the second. But as far as did Johnston actually make it to that hill? Does that matter as much as what he told Lee? So I that's a good I see what you're does saying. Does it matter if he actually made it onto Little Round Top? Because whatever because whatever, whatever he, he told, told Lee, Lee is what is the, what, is Lee, what matters. You, yeah. 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 yeah it, I find it interesting that um Lee and Longstreet and Hill and Johnston are all looking at the map and Lee makes the comment, did you get there? And and when Johnston says yes, it's it's stated that Lee turns to Longstreet and says, I think you better get going. Yeah. Which means they had the plan. Sure. In my opinion. You know, here's here's the plan. Now we just gotta wait on confirmation yeah. you know, of, of some information. And once we get that confirmation, you need to go. And so where, who do we get that from uh, that Lee says, I think you better get going? Does that come from, that comes Johnston? from Johnston? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And was Johnston in the pro or anti Longstreet camp after the war? Well, um, when McClaws is writing him, I think it is, um, you know, he, he tries to say, hey, you know, Longstreet's writing this article where, you know, it says this or that, or Fitzlee, I guess it is. Um, you know, Longstreet says this or that. 
Johnston is very careful, uh, you know, in his answers. And he says, you know, Longstreet was never – because he was actually on Longstreet staff at one time. Okay. He says, Longstreet was never anything but kind to me. Uh-huh. And he, and he basically says, I don't want to get into any of this controversy. Okay. And he says, do not publish this letter. Okay. So he specifically knows that, you know – Hey, here's a here's a trap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just sure. stick your hand in here, see what happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he said, "Wait a second, you know, wait a second. And uh, and you know, he never, uh, at least as he intimates in this letter, he he never had uh, any problems or difficulty with Longstreet. Um, you know, it seems like Longstreet's, you know, maybe saying some things about what he assumed Johnston's responsibility was. Uh-huh. Um, you know that that we could could dig into and and you know analyze a little bit but uh um you know bottom line is it you know as far as does it matter i i think it tells lee what lee wants to know about being able to attack up the emmitsburg road right and how he can get troops over there to do that so you know the the you know the the information the timeliness of the information um you know, Lee and and Johnston enjoyed a really good relationship. Um, Johnston names one of his sons after Robert E. Lee, mm-hmm. and uh, you know maybe maybe this is a, a decent way to uh, to kind of wrap this up. A there little you bit. go, beautiful. But um, you know, at at one point, and and I'll, I'll show the guys here in the studio. There's there's Sam Johnston. There he is. Okay, okay. Uh, one of the very few, if not the only, tin type that that people have ever seen of him. Okay. Interesting. Okay. And this was auctioned off uh, a couple years ago. A guy by the name of Dave Patalo has it. Uh, it's part of his collection, but it included some letters. Okay. And uh, included um, a, a, a CDV of, of uh, Robert E. Lee. And Johnston's wife, Mary, writes a letter to Lee. Um, you know, uh, and, and Lee responds to. Johnston and his wife in reference to naming their son after General Lee. And it's dated Petersburg, 23rd of July, 63. So a few weeks after the battle, this is, this is pretty contemporary. Lee suggests that the boy should be named for his father, whose virtues and merits I certainly pray he may imitate. Okay, pretty good praise. And in the second one, dated the 24th of September, 67, and addressed to Mary Johnston, General Lee again thanks her for the compliment of naming their son after him and goes on to say, I am much obliged to you for his photograph. In poor return, send him my own. <laughs> and uh, he, re- he signed that one, R.E. Lee, and inscribed to the back, uh, Robert Lee Johnston. So, you know, I, I think if if Johnston had been a screwball and not, you know, uh, given Lee the information that Lee needed when he needed it, uh, A, he wouldn't have been promoted. Lee, Lee wasn't a guy that, that suffered fools. And B, you know, I think they enjoy a good, you know, uh, relationship afterwards. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, um, I, I don't know if we'll ever know where Johnston did or didn't go. Um, you know, there's, there's, I, I think the fun in it is trying to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we just don't have enough information that says, here's exactly when I went, here's what time I was there, here's what I learned. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's it's easy to kind of go down some of these rabbit holes and, and prescribe some time, hmm. um, you know, and, and time and space continuum stuff that's just not there. <laughs> yeah. That's just not there. And so. like Eric said, like, does it really matter whether he made it there or not? Because the information he gave Lee is what was actionable or Lee considered actionable. And that really set the stage for day two. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks very much for coming and doing this, Chris. We what, we scheduled this like a month ago, didn't we? And then uh, it's been a while. Yeah, and then yeah, we, we had, had some snow again in 2021 the Weather other delays. week. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I think we're getting more snow this week, aren't we? Supposed yeah. to, yeah. Mm. It's supposed to be like seven degrees on Friday. Okay. Yeah, okay, well. Yeah. I'll be going to Florida or something. Yeah. You can sit uh, at home and listen to a nice podcast in the warmth of your home, right? Yeah, no, I've, I'm, I'm sick of my own voice. Do you I, have any you can suggest, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> um, it, again, if you guys uh, are coming into town, you want to take a tour with any of the guides, uh, just Matt at AddressingGettysburg.com. We'll put you in touch with them. Uh, soon, we will have a revamped website, and you'll be able to go and make a reservation all on your own. 
uh, right there on the website, get a guide and uh, go out and uh, do whatever. Uh, we're just basically a conduit between you and the guide um, because, uh, well, I don't want to organize tours because that's a pain in the butt. <laughs> so we're just finding out when the guides are available and when they want to be sold and you can book them and uh, that'll help them out through the winter. But we're going to keep it going as long as you guys uh, do it. So uh, look out for that coming soon. Otherwise, thank you very much, Chris. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Captain Johnston, for giving us uh, a lot to talk about all these years later. It's and like a Seinfeld episode, right? <laughs> that episode about nothing. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> and maybe uh, all, all of you guys out there listening who are in the service, uh, you never know when you're going to be part of a historic event. So uh, keep detailed notes so we don't have to wonder uh, in the future. Uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you once again. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Turn on the notifications. Five star reviews, and uh, that's it. Hope to hear from you soon. Have a good one. Our hearts of stout have got a stain, for soon tis known from whence we came. Wherever we go, they dread the name of Gary Owen and Glory. Instead, it's follow, drink down, and pay the reckoning on the mail. No man for that shall go to jail from Gary Owen and Glory. Instead, it's follow, drink down, and pay the reckoning on the mail. No man for that shall go to jail from Gary Owen and Glory.